Hello and welcome to Do Go On, your favourite podcast show with me, Matt Stewart, him, Dave Warnicky, and her. Sorry, what was? Matt, we've been friends for like two years. Longer, I think. Sorry, it's of course it's Jessica Perkins. <laughs> that is my name. Favorite podcast. That's nice. Thanks yeah, everyone that's for making that us. It is really nice. All the people listening right now who we're, believe this is their favorite. We're podcast. number one. We're number one. Don't we're start singing the number one banana song again. That was that was no good. Number one banana. No. A lot of people said number it got in their head. <laughs> number one banana. I don't have the muff on my mic like normal, so sorry if any of my peas are like that. Oh, that. <laughs> Yeah, it's oh, the that's p- what the muff does. Yeah, the muff really cuts it. P for phlegm. Oh, that's really yeah, it's loud fucked. in your ears. I'm not going to do any P sounds <laughs> after this P. You'll have to think about every single word you say. Yeah. P's all right. You can avoid P. I that's won't it, talk about all... My Little Pony, for instance. Oh, fuck. I just did it. My oh, Little no. My little Oni. I watched it last week. You know how we did the episode last week? Just did a topic on My Little Pony. Yeah. I, do, I don't recall. It really divided our listenership. Turns out we got a, quite a few... Fans of the franchise, yeah, and also a lot of people who are more like what we were talking about. How like, oh, surprisingly, this is a big thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was interesting. And a couple of listeners messaged me, said, "Just watch it. I think you could like it." I don't know what they're basing that on, but I watched the first episode mm-hmm. of uh, the Friendship Club or whatever. Friendship is magic. Friendship is magic. The Friendship Club. <laughs> and it ended with a cliffhanger, so I don't know. And it was, you know, it was a bit dark. Oh. Um, Oh my universe. goodness! Yeah, the darkness came to Ponyville, um, but it was you know it was just like it was like all those cartoons, you know like there's this cartoon that I watched. I got home as the sun was coming up at a Bucks party, right? And me and my friend, this were is how still, all great stories start. <laughs> we were you know off chops basically, and off we chops. were we flicked on the TV, and it was just the end of an old AFL Grand Final replay. Great! And the very <laughs> next show, like Saturday Disney, was coming on or whatever morning it was. And this show, Phineas and Ferb, mm. and we were transfixed. <laughs> There's like this sort of secret agent platypus in it. What? And then these two brothers or cousins, one's a bit dumb and the other one's a genius, or maybe they're both geniuses, but one seems dumb. And then they just build all these cool things. It was kind of like that. Cool. Only with ponies. And But you were drunk with Phineas and Ferb. Yeah. Mm. But that platypus, Perry, I think his name was. <laughs> Sorry, so it's, good. It's Perry from My Little Pony. No, See, I've, got pe- the, I've got the thing oh. on. I can say it all day long. I shouldn't because that is that's poor sound quality. Oh, that's not good sound quality. There we go. But anyway, yeah, the show like it was pretty good. They were fine. We so they're unicorns. Mm-hmm. They got horns on their heads. Yeah, some of them. Are and some of them fly. They're not all unicorns, are they? And they're all females, apart from two, who are like male horse slaves, and they fly. Are they Princess like Sparkle in some sort of sex across to another sex trade? Town. Dave. Dave, it's you... not. There's we didn't we. I think Jess made it very clear. There's no. And you have upset enough people. You really have. Do you want to really, keep digging? Hmm? You're really annoyed. Well, it just sounds like that though. A couple of ponies have been put out to stud against their will. Look, I don't. I don't know <laughs> even if that's true. But it, it did seem a bit. I don't even think they're all female. I think they. Okay. Yeah. Just in the first episode, maybe. Or they. Because have... there was like an an old lady and a really old lady, mm. Granny Smith. Oh yeah. Oh, good name. At. Uh, which is an Australian invented apple. Invented? Yeah. We invented the... Uh-huh. the... That is actually true. It was... But how do you invent? You cross-pollinate. They accidentally cross-pollinated okay. so with they the... Cross-poll- they didn't invent it, though, did they? It's a, oh. it's a wrong word for an apple. Um, semantics. <laughs> we also invented that word. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty happy with that. We did not. We did not invent the word Of course, semantics. and uh, as we all know, Dave is anti-semantic. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm very against semantics. <laughs> I was pretty happy about that. Um, I know. I could tell by the fist pumping. <laughs> that was like the happiest I've ever seen you. Anyway, I don't know. Yeah. But anyway. I've seen you at Meredith. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway. My, my Little Pony. Yeah, Meredith. How good is that yeah. place? I, um, the music festival, not just someone called Meredith. I've I get, seen you I get, at Meredith. I give uh, My Little Pony Friendship Town two oh hooves up. Two hooves up. Out of five. Good. No, I don't, I don't know. I don't. Two who's up out of five who's up? It's a pretty a- ambiguous system, well, I've used. Yeah, um, yeah, well, actually, a- it would be out of four because most horses have four hooves. Yeah, okay. So it's, so it's a two, two and a half four? star. I mean, relatively, that's probably about right because I don't think I'm going to watch any more. Even you know, the cliffhanger couldn't keep you sucked in? Look, you've I, always I, got to give it three episodes. Of any TV okay. show, you've got to give it three. Even, yeah, I, I agree. Even yeah. the Godfella? The Godfella. Even Godfella. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy, he's at it again. Bed dead. <laughs> 
<laughs> was it bed dead? I can't remember. Dead yeah, bed? dead no, bed dead instead dead. of Breaking Bad. <laughs> it's close. Anyway, but now I get it. Like when when we talked about Riverdance, which was something that's very you know close to my heart, and you hear people mocking it, and you you know you get kind of you get you get sad. <laughs> You get sad. Yeah, that's true, because it's like when you love when you love something. Yeah. Is there anything that we could? Uh... I've never done it, but it, when you do, I've heard. Yeah, uh, I was really gonna, love something. I was going to ask you, Matt. Is there anything that you love that we could take down? But Saint no. Kilda Football Club. Yeah. Oh, wow. Tism. What the if band, we just pulled those or apart? Or Meredith Music Festival. Just shredded them. Well, like, no. that's lame. All of those are indestructible. <laughs> that's the thing. I think when you get to Matt's age, right. <laughs> Oh, he's a wise old man. You're more uh, wisdom, you're more confident. Your most people, choices. most people, you've like come to a custom with death because nearly everyone that was yeah. born in your year is now dead. Yeah, that's I right. All my all, all my time now is spent at funerals. It changes you. Your funerals change you. I'm morning, morning, noon, and night. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great little phrase. Yeah. Anyway. I, what, it's almost like we've uh, we had a pony cliffhanger and we're up to episode two, but we're actually doing a different topic today, Dave. <laughs> that is right. I am uh, digging into the hat, digging into the Facebook hat, which we don't often do. So I just thought thought we'd keep it even because we get a lot of suggestions on Twitter. Yeah. We get a lot of suggestions on email. Probably mostly Twitter. Would you agree? Twitter's probably the the most the big one. Yeah. yeah. And then when people want to suggest a, a few things, they go use the email. You get more characters. Sure. Sometimes yeah. people, you know, and we put them all in. Oh yeah, yeah. We definitely. chuck in ten suggestions at the same time. But yeah. that I reckon the the people messaging in are, are more characters on email as well. We also did get some hand delivered. You 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 forget to yeah, mention that. Yeah, that's true. We've had we've had a hand delivered one. One, two, one. Two. Well, let two. me just Can say we get one as well. There were two on the same. We place. are open at. <laughs> I'd just like to say that we're open at all times, and you can hand us pieces of paper anywhere. It's like being served a bill. We're open at all times. You've been served open for business. I am not open at all. I'm times. I'm standing hey, spread front... legged right now. Is that? That's not relevant at my all. My front door. My but front door is open. Okay. What's your address? Um, two. <laughs> two. <laughs> Cherry Pop Lane. Wisconsin. Two. Two. <laughs> Still talking, it's 222 2nd Street, Tooville. What's your postcode? Double two. Population <laughs> two. Another two. And another two. Oh, okay. Could have said good triple two, but I don't say that. No, you don't. Because that, that's a, a, some sort of four. I would have said double two, double two. Yeah, I would have as well. Double two, two, two. You idiot. Double two, two. That's cute. That is, that is it. So you can drop off. Or if you want to come to our live Melbourne International Comedy Festival set, Show which is on sale. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Melbourne International Comedy Festival show is on sale now, and it, we're selling some tickets, guys. Yeah, tickets so are moving. Which is cool, <laughs> but uh, at those events, let's encourage people to hand us things yeah, for the hat. That'd be cool. Uh, suggestions, not just like their children. No, or... I'd like some fan art. Oh, fan art for sure. <laughs> I'd also like um, a fan. vouchers for sanity. Sanity, yes. Which is a Brushes. CD shop. A CD shop that I'm not sure it exists anymore. Uh, it does, in but only in yeah, regional It's great. Great, so centers. we'll have to get the voucher Where and then still buy CDs. we'll have to drive on a road trip to buy, what, a, a Human Nature or a Hanson CD no, I, no, I think they update the CDs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so are people in the country up to date? Well, yeah-ish. Great. More Dixie Chicks and Lee Kernigan, but still. Great, Just they're, 25. They're new stuff. Dixie Chicks are great. Yeah, I'm the, not ready to make nice either. Oh, God, who is? No. I chick? sang um, Travelling Soldier <laughs> in a pub in a tiny town in Ireland. <laughs> Who with? I know that song. He was waiting for the bus in his army. Were you invited to perform? Did you just stand on the no, bar? No, I just felt it in my heart. Just felt it. No, you know, like every pub in Ireland has a guy with a guitar. So he was singing and everybody got like, to sing. And, I and was, he, they were the, like, get up and sing. Is the the Irish guy on the guitar. Has he just has that in his repertoire? He had it in, his, in his book, so I was like, "Well, I'm doing it." And so, he, and I made him sing with me. Is it a legal a legal song. requirement to have the guitar and the man to yeah. serve alcohol in Ireland? Yeah, yeah, it's part of the RSA. Really? Yeah. No, dickhead. <laughs> it's part of their culture. Hey, Dave. Oh. I once uh, had a meal at a, in, a, in Dublin. It's a Mexican meal, and the place was called the Blue Saxophone. That was a fun story. Mm-hmm. If we've got anybody in Dublin... And they played uh, jazz music whilst you ate f- uh, takeaway Mexican food. It was a very strange combination in <laughs> Ireland. You ate takeaway inside the place? Maybe that was my problem. Yeah, they were telling me to leave. That was definitely... Mm-hmm. I thought it was a hate crime. <laughs> That's what I thought was happening. You want me to leave? Okay, I get it. You don't serve my kind here? Like, no, sir, we've already served you 
Now what? can you please leave? Would they not have had an accent though, I think? No, that was the weirdest part. That's why I thought, <laughs> I'm like, why am I, why is there a hate crime? You have the exact same sounding voice as me. <laughs> Dave, were you talking to a mirror like a parrot? Yeah, I was pretty <laughs> drunk in this blue saxophone. <laughs> Hey, Dave, uh, what's uh, the question? Okay, okay great. Sorry, sorry. So this is suggested <laughs> through Facebook by Tim Robertson. So thank you, Tim. Appreciate this a lot. On your My team. question this week is going to be a bit more abstract, then I'll explain the topic. My question is, would you answer this <laughs> newspaper ad? Ooh, I like I'll read this. read it to you. you okay. Say, you say, <clears throat> newspaper ad. Men wanted for hazardous journey. No, I'm a woman. I'm out. Okay, Matt, you still in? Nah, hazardous. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> It gets worse. Oh. Low wages. No. Nope. Bitter cold. Long hours of complete darkness. Oh. Safe return doubtful. Honour and recognition in event of success. That's all it says. No. Nah. Are you in? This could be any of the episodes we've done in the past. Uh, Burke and Wills. This could be uh, a pirate expedition. The, uh, it could be an Arctic the one, expedition. Yeah, the one where Everest. Uh, Everest? Was it the Spice Everest Spice Girls. One? Spice Girls was very similar. That's right. That was the ad that they answered. Beatles. Hazardous journey. Long hours of darkness. Pop group called the Spice Girls. I'm in. I'm in. They wanted to weed out uh, the non scary, sporty, and <laughs> baby ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the baby ones would definitely respond to that ad. Um, to answer your question, no, I wouldn't. But so I'm this a big is, old wuss. And this, is this a famous uh, page in history or is this some sort of obs- obscure thing? No, this is uh, quite a, a famous event. Okay. Not super obscure. So when you say it, are we going to go, oh? But I feel like you possibly, know a lot possibly. more than me, so probably yeah, not. Yeah, say it and let's see if uh, Jess goes, oh. okay. I'll just do it now and you won't know. Okay, so I'm a good actor. Both well, of don't you... act. Just be natural. No, let it happen. Act. Let Now let it happen. I can't. See? <laughs> I don't know what I'm really... I've been acting for 25 years. <laughs> yeah, you have. Acting up <laughs> like know, a bloody... I don't know who I really am. You're I'm a really... real character, that's for sure. I am. I'm not a real person. I'm just a character have now. You... What if you are really just good at acting and this is just you can... Oh, my God. How would you know? I'm having a panic attack. How would you know? You'd never know what I'm like at home. I'm not having a panic attack. I'm just pretending. <gasps> <gasps> no, I am. <laughs> Help me. Okay. All right, because you guys said no to the ad. In 1914, yeah. 5,000 men said yes. 1914, they, ours. The, they applied. The war. It is the year of the war, but it's not the war. Oh. They were applying 5, okay. to be a part of Ernest Shackleton's third <gasps> trip to Antarctica. Oh, I have heard of that. And just kind of guessed it. Are you acting? Kind of. No, no, no. I remember, uh, I remember Ernie Shackleton from uh, primary school looking at his, uh, his expedition. Oh, you looked at uh, in the old schoolyard? I think so. Yeah, in the schoolyard. Schoolyard? Away, away like, from the curriculum. We're like, yeah, can we learn about this? And the teacher was like, no. And we're like, no. So we went outside and just read some books and taught each other. Because I think that's important for that's, children that's to the, do. That's the public school system for you. I went, to, I went to Catholic school. That's the Catholic school system <laughs> for you. Mm-hmm. They, won't, they don't want to teach anything but God. <laughs> it's hard to teach God because he, he knows, knows everything. everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now God. Yeah, so, I know. So, Matt, you've heard of this? You've heard of this uh, Shackleton's? I've, I've heard of Antarctica. Oh, okay. But I've, I don't... Shackleton doesn't ring a bell. Could you locate Antarctica on a map? Yeah. Excellent. Very there good. it is. I'm <laughs> touching it right now on this globe. Yeah, it's weird that we have a globe in this studio. On this big, studio. beautiful globe. <laughs> Check out these marvellous globes. <laughs> <laughs> we've, got, uh, we've got a whole wall of... Globes on this studio. It's it's a weird decor, but it kind of works. Hey, it's our studio, and we like it. Anyway, Shackleton. Okay, so Ernie. F- five thousand men signed up for this. They said, well, they they applied. Lot. They had no idea that they were applying to be part of what is considered the last major expedition of the heroic age of Antarctic exploration. Wow, it's kind of similar to the ad you guys placed um, when you were looking for a third person for the podcast. Yeah. And uh, we, we said honour and recognition in uh, in event of success, yeah. and you are still waiting for that. I'm still waiting, but it's in the event of success, and we have not <laughs> yes. successed oh, yet. I can't wait to success. It's around the corner, I reckon. Yeah, I reckon. Success is near. Our safe return is doubtful <laughs> from this podcast. <laughs> well, it's a bloody long report, so we better start it. Is, oh, uh, so the only people I... I think the names I think of with Antarctica are Scott. Yes. Of the Antarctic and Mawson and his hut. Oh, Mawson, yeah. Douglas it, Mawson. Is this, is this post those guys? Uh, about the same time, they're, they're considered the sort of main people. Robert Falcon Scott, Douglas Mawson, Ernest Shackleton. And they're all... So this is Shackleton's third trip to the Antarctic. 
such a good name too, isn't it's it? It's great. Shackleton. Like Shackleton's Ernest. good. Ernest is good. Yeah. Put them together. Good name. Bang. So, Ernest Shackleton was born in 1874. A great year. Oh. You pointed at me for that. Yeah, because... Dave, I'm not going to give it to you if you want it. Oh, that's weird. A great year. <laughs> oh, we, don't, we don't have many good, great years. We have a lot of good years. This on one's this a great year. Wow. I've already forgotten what year it was. Did you say 1974? 1874. You can't do the 1800s, can he? It confuses Matt, he, him so much. He's not younger than you, which is unbelievable, I know. 18. What? There's Seven, pe- there no, were people 18, before me. 1874 was a great, great year. year. He was born in 1874 in, uh, in uh, Ireland, about 75 kilometres from Dublin, also 75 kilometres from the Blue <laughs> Saxophone <laughs> Mexican Restaurant. Oh, what a, what a place. Ah, was Ireland around in the 1870s? I believe it was. Hmm. Uh, he was the second of 10 children. Oof. His brother, Frank Do Shackleton. His parents know what's causing it. <laughs> That's what my dad says. No, we love it. We love it. His brother, Frank Shackleton, would have... Nah, no good. (laughs) No, it sucks, doesn't it? Er Frank is so much less earnest than earnest. (laughs) Yeah, because it would be short for Francis as well. Surely Francis Shackleton. That sounds like a good name. But Frank Shackleton makes him sound like he's a a New York gangster or something. It does. I once... um, Every time I hear the name Ernest, I think of... Ernest, the character? No, I, I saw... Um, the yokel guy? I saw my friends when I was at uni um, do a production of The Importance of the Being Ernest, Ernest. Mm-hmm. the Oscar Wilde play. And there's a big line where he says at the end, like a bit of wordplay, I now know the importance of being Ernest. But he said the wrong character name. He said his own <laughs> name because he was nervous that his parents were watching him act for the first time. I now know the importance of being Dom. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> 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 but he said it that calmly. That's great. Yeah, great. I think that made it better. Nailed it. That's a really funny little ad lib. <laughs> no, nailed it. Got a big laugh. Oscar Wilde would have been proud. Loved to laugh. Anyway, uh, Ernest's brother Frank Shackleton would achieve notoriety as a suspect, later exonerated, in the 1907 theft of the Irish Crown Jewels. Ooh. The theft was never solved and the jewels were never recovered. <gasps> Just a little side note. I thought it was quite interesting. I've never heard of the theft of the crown jewels. No. They're not sure who did it. A lot of people still say when I was Googling this, Frank, big suspect. Wow. Uh, But Ernest, his father was initially a landowner. Man, that sounds like a cushy job. Landowner. What do you do? Imagine owns some land. I own this land. Yeah, that's a job. Like, I own own this pen, for instance. You're a pen owner, not a landowner. I don't think you do. That was just on the table when we came in. I've lost the ink bit. I've so been spent the last own, couple of minutes looking for the, bit, the middle bit of the ink. You own that tiny tube of plastic. Where oh. the fuck is it gone? <laughs> this is why you can't own land, Matt. <laughs> Father, landowner, threw that all the way, that dream career to study medicine. What a dickhead. After he's, you know, he's got kids and then he's like, I'm going I'm to be a doctor now. When he became a doctor, he moved the family to London. Shaquille O'Ton, <gasps> as oh, he uh, would be called on the rap circuit. What? Shackleton, Shaquille O'Ton. Oh. <laughs> I've even got the words here spelt out phonetically. Shaquille O'Ton. I did not get that at all. No. Did you not? Sorry, you guys. I'd call that just a, a, a not good joke. Yeah. Shaquille, just, do I need to repeat it? Nah. There is that old rule that if you have to. You have to. You're a bad comedian. Shaquille O. Shackle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ton. Also oh. a bit like Shaquille uh, O'Neal. Yep. Mixed with Shackleton, mixed with When what you said a rap name, but I mean Shaquille O'Neal was a basketball. Yeah, it's just his name. It's not I mean, like he, a... I think maybe maybe he released a rap song, but, right. but often I, I don't reference I think main, whatever he is. For example, Eminem. Oh, you know how you're just saying this is a really long report? Well, most of it is me. I've actually written the explanation of this little joke out because I knew this would happen because I knew you guys weren't Street, enough for me. Oh, boy. Oh, no, 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 Dave. Shaquille are... Oton, as he shall be referred to from now on. I don't want to call him that at all. I want to call him Ernie. Can we Shaquille vote? Shaquille Oton. Okay, we can vote. All right, Matt, I'm in for Shaquille Oton. Yeah, okay. Matt, you're the decider here. I'm in for just calling him Ernie. Ernie. I like Ernie better. Yeah. Okay, that's, let's just do a count here. <laughs> Two, Two for Ernie. Ernie. Yep. How many for Shaquille Oton? Can I find a friend? 
No. To, to, to let them know that you lost this vote. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need, I need counselling. <laughs> I'm panicking. I've got to call my mum. Mum? Mum, it happened again. <laughs> mum, I bombed. <laughs> wasn't even on stage. So I was with my friends. You thought Shaquille O'Ton was cool, right? When I, when I called you to ask about it? She co-wrote it. She's a smart lady. She's great. All right, so... Amanda. Ernie. Fuck, that's such such bad comedy. <laughs> Can I just say that? Ernie, I'm so sorry to the listeners. Can we please tweet in hashtag Shaquille O'Ton? <laughs> hashtag Shaquille... Don't ask me how to spell it. <laughs> Look up Shaquille O'Neal. and s- oh replace God. the Neal with Ton. <laughs> then laugh for five minutes. <laughs> then hit send. Okay. Uh, despite his father's wishes, he dropped out of school and didn't become a doctor like his dad. That's what he wanted to do. At age 16, and sh- Ernie <laughs> left school to join the Navy. He did an apprenticeship, and during his four years at sea, so straight to sea for four years, Shackleton learned his trade, travelled to remote places on Earth, and formed acquaintances with a variety of people from many walks of life. Wow. Learning to be at home with all kinds of men, so sort of upper class middle class and the lower class. Oh, he can just sort of blend in with mm-hmm. all, with everybody. Which makes him a good leader. But it also does, you know, it kind of gives this weird impression that like, you know, we're all the same. We're all the same. <laughs> weird. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> in no way am I the same. <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal released oh, four God. albums. <laughs> Rap circuit. There we are. Wondered, oh, yes. I wondered why you went quiet. Shaq Diesel. Shaq Fu. De Return. No. You Can't Stop the Rain. Spelled R-E-I-G-N. Okay. And Respect. Ooh. You, I would imagine it was spelled R-A-I-N. You Can't Stop the Rain. And it was just him. His house Standing is flooded. <laughs> like, like lifting up his VCR out of the water. Trying to, where do I put this? Oh, no, the carpet's ruined. Oh, fuck. I'm a tall man, but my b- 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 VCR's not tall. Because why it was just like it was just a really dramatic album cover of him just standing in the rain. It was like a black and white photo, but yours is much better. <laughs> He's just panicking. Yeah. His wife's <laughs> taking a photo of him, like clearing out, just holding things above holding his head. Shaq, can you hold this? But it's even funny because there's only about like three centimetres of water. There's not a lot of water, yeah. but he's just panicking. He's just, he but what if it gets it? worse? What if it gets worse? <laughs> Mary, I'm scared of water. It's not rain. You just, the dishwasher leaked. <laughs> How can we be sure? It's coming from everywhere. <laughs> he had a hit single, oh, no. Top 40. It's one of the seven plagues of Egypt. <laughs> My firstborn son's about to die. <laughs> it's called What's Up Doc? Can We Rock? Oh my god! So that, I, I wasn't sure if it was going to have you know rhyming skills. That's or not. what but, I was trying to channel. That kind of that kind of badness with Shaquille O'Ton, and you laughed at me and made me feel like an idiot. And here I am feeling justified because now. you're not Shaquille O'Neal. You're you know. Dave. Warnicky. He's a really cool guy. You're an ass pod he's, from Melbourne. He's a, cool he's a professional basketball. He's also a very clever dude that invested his money really well and is now worth hundreds of millions. Well, are we doing a report on Shaquille well, O'Neal? Or are we doing I'm one on sure Sha- he had Shaquille a movie O'Ton? Called Blue Chip. <laughs> So that doesn't surprise me. It was good at investing. Well, Matt, would you like to change your vote to Shaquille O'Ton? No. We're still with Ernie. Ernie. That's just, it's really just for time. Great. So, well, good. I'm glad. Imagine having to say Shaquille O'Ton every time. Yeah. We've already said it too much. We've already wasted way too much time. Ernie, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Shaquille O'Ton, <laughs> a.k.a. Shaq Ton the second. The What's second. up, Doc? What's up, Can Doc? we rock? Can we rock? <laughs> Will it ever stop raining? <laughs> my VCR. <laughs> oh no! Oh, all my tapes are my best. My highlights. Get the tarp. <laughs> Get the tarp. Not again, Janine. <laughs> Janine, why do we build on this swamp? Uh, Ernie had a, then had a few different jobs and different shift ships, expanding his experience. Just trying to paint a man with a lot of experience sure. on ships. Got it. Uh, his first taste of Antarctica was aboard the Discovery Expedition in 1901, which was led by Robert Falcon Scott, who you were talking oh. about, Matt, who was a controversial character. Great Scott. Great Scott. Yeah. Thank you. He's a, quite a controversial character, many of whom paint as a bit of a fuckhead. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Is that Scott's the, is a bit that, of a fuckhead. Is that how they describe some it some people in say their he's diary not a, entries? A lot of people say he's not a great leader. All, oh. I love these people. We all know a lot of the stuff about them because they all kept diary entries. Yeah, it's so handy, isn't it? Big thing. 
But then I worry because, yeah, like why we should keep diaries, but then people would find them and read them and be like, God, you're obnoxious. You know, <laughs> I worry about that. I worry about it every day. Except that we release <laughs> we release an audio diary with microphones oh, every week. Shit. We are very obnoxious. Oh, no. Oh. I've thought about when we die, at, up to this point, there's like a, probably a, a 90 plus hours of us speaking. Can you imagine, though, that our loved ones as well... Like, you know how in movies, like, a partner will die and somebody keeps calling their phone to hear their voicemail message? Like, our friends and family and loved ones hoping that I eventually get some loved ones. Over, it's over, they've got overwhelming material. They've got too much. I reckon, for me, the highlight reel would be me saying Shaquille O'Donnell uh-huh. about ten times uh-huh. in a row. Yeah. Mine would just be me laughing at you saying rat catcher. We still get tweets about it. Yeah. We still get the tweets. Or the... Or the boom boom. Oh, fuck. That was the best. Boom boom. Anyway, we peaked early. It's a few few quick flashbacks there. Matt's uh, Matt's highlight would just be now. Hang on, just over and over again because that's all he says. It's a catchphrase. Remember ever saying that? You've typecast yourself, Matt. You're the guy that says "hang on." (laughs) What What a career you've had. I've never said those words before. What words haven't you said? Um. The words you just said. Yeah. Ah, I'm pretty smart. Ah, Hang yeah. on. Gotcha. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so he's, uh, he's been to Antarctica in 1901. Robert Falcon Scott, some people think he's great. I, I, there's many things I've read about him. Not a great lad. Anyway, Shackleton's particular duties on this trip were listed as, quote, in charge of seawater analysis. And w- emptying the poop bucket. <laughs> pretty much. Ward, oh. ward room caterer in charge of hold stores and provisions. A ranger of entertainment. Does it say anything about the poop bucket? It does not, but I imagine that comes under the entertainment. Yeah, he gets a weekly karaoke night going, I think, and he also... Weekly? Uh, trivia nights. Yeah, tri- well, yeah, I mean, there's plenty of variety Oh, I going. see. I thought it was just like one thing a week was their entertainment. Oh, no, there's a different every- thing, activity every night. Oh, there's great. Hula. Hula? I was trying to think, of, no, not Zumba. What's the one where you go under a stick? Limbo. Uh, limbo. limbo. I'm great at limbo. Are you? Yeah, well, I used to be. I assume I still am. It's kind of like when you have <laughs> skills as a as a teenager and you assume you still have them. Like I was, a, I was a pretty good runner and I was good at like high jump, and I still figure I could do that. You, can, you still? I probably you couldn't. Could I probably can't limbo anymore. Memory. Yeah, yeah. I used to be really good at Pokemon cards, so I reckon I still got it. I still am. Matt, reckon, what, what did you what used to be good at in the uh, in the eighteen uh, seventies? In the eighteen seventies, uh, were you, were you good, good at, at prospecting for gold? Were oh. you good at hunting mammoth? Yeah, hunting mammoth. <laughs> <laughs> Were you good at evolving into a human from a monkey? <laughs> I was, yeah, I was really good at being a single-celled organism. Yep. So, did you start the Big Bang? I was pretty good at being the first fish to uh, walk on land. <laughs> that was one of my better things. Renowned for it. Yeah. No, one, But no one could appreciate it because they're all stuck in the water. Yeah. Where'd Matt go? Who knows? Yeah. To come back. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was also good at um, tennis. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. But with wooden rackets. <laughs> there yeah. we go. During the Antarctic winter of 1902, the year that Matt won Wimbledon, <laughs> in, the, in the confines of the Iced in Discovery, Shackleton edited the expedition's South Polar Times magazine. Oh, that's adorable. Which I imagine when you're trapped on the ice, your circulation is quite small. Mm. You make one coffee and you pass it around the ship. <laughs> Yet they have an editor. <laughs> Uh, the men reached a record latitude, this is still in the 1901 trip, got closer to the South Pole than anyone had ever done before, wow. beating the previous record established two years earlier. So this is a big, at the time, people are like, I want to get to the South Pole. First one there, first one there. They get a little bit closer, a little bit closer. Uh, this journey was particularly harsh on Shackleton. He was sent home sick. He had, however, got an invaluable experience and fallen in love with the idea of him being the first one to reach the Pole. Oh, well, why don't they get married then? <laughs> If it, if it was legal in that year, they would have. They weren't very have progressive. We, have we been everywhere? I think, have we legalised pole marriage? <laughs> Is that a thing? Well, that's my follow-up question. But firstly, have we been everywhere? Humans? Like, yeah. Is there, do you think there's a chance that we've missed something? Ocean. There's a lot of undiscovered... Well, they say we've only been in 10% of the ocean. So, like, under the water. The yeah. final under frontier. The that's right. The we have, beach. The beach. Is that what they say? The yeah. beach. No, space, isn't it? Ah. The beach where man has <laughs> never treaded. Hey, guys, it's actually pretty good in the water. Interesting. You hear stories <laughs> sometimes of like uh, new areas of forest being discovered and stuff. You're like, yeah, There's the, still animals being discovered occasionally, like oh, insects. Oh, no, and... it's not occasionally. I think it's all the time. Oh, right. Okay. Well, and like, 
Yeah, I just wonder. And they discover. I just, I'd really love there to be like a, a pretty big island somewhere that oh, we missed. So cool. And like, ah, oh, sick. That would have been a fun time. To, Discovering uh, stuff. Yeah. Huge. But I mean, yeah, there, usually there were people there already, right? So Yeah. So I guess it depends on what you mean by... I think everywhere I don't has mean been colonising, I guess. <laughs> I I, have we colonised everywhere I don't yet? think that's a great idea. I have mean, we, we wouldn't exist without it, but... Have we banged on everything? <laughs> hmm. Has anyone banged on Everest? I wonder, Can we does, Google that? Does this podcast mean we've um, done a pod on every continent now? Oh, God. Oh, uh, we would have. Do you reckon? Uh, maybe South, well, South America, we... This story will go to South America. Okay. Oh my god, Dave, you did it! We did it, guys. We did all the content. The first Sorry. podcast to make it to all seven, no one seven else to was, nine continents. No one else was brave enough. I'm sorry that I keep interrupting when at the very start you told us this is the, your longest report ever and I keep asking. I'm not, I'm not going to talk for the next ten minutes. Page two of thirteen. Oh my god. <laughs> so, Shaq returned to Britain, spent some time as a journalist and then uh, was elected secretary of the Scottish Royal Geographical Society. He also unsuccessfully stood for Parliament. God, he's a busy boy. Yes, he, he, he would tell his wife that he felt that he was good at nothing except when he was away on his long trips. Aww. Felt was felt lost when he was not lost, if you know what I mean. Hmm? Oh, that's beautiful, Yeah, Dave. he loved, loved the isolation. Aww. In 1908, he returned to, the, to Antarctica as the leader of his own expedition on the ship Nimrod. Nimrod. The Nimrod expedition. During the expedition, his team climbed Mount Erebus for the first ever time, which is a very big mountain down there. He made many important scientific discoveries. I've got a big mountain down there. Do you? <laughs> How big? <laughs> I regretted it as soon as I started to say it, but it was worth it. I enjoyed it. Do go on. <laughs> um, his team set a record by coming even closer to the South Pole than ever before, but they didn't make it. Oh. There was a bit of argy-bargy between Shackleton and his old leader, Scott, who was pissed that Shackleton was using a base similar into the position, that, the one that he used. He's like, that's my base. Don't you just fucking touch my base. Right. He's being a bit of a diva. Yeah. Shackleton went back to Britain and he was knighted, became Sir Ernest Shackleton, aged 35. Whoa. What a young go-getter. Matt. Matt, how, how, how many times did you be knighted? Age 35. Had they even invented knighthoods when you were 35? When I, well, back... Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to think back <laughs> uh, to the... No, but okay. To the Middle Ages? Let's let's pull back the curtain a little bit and reveal that Matt was not actually a caveman. What? No, but, tell him. Don't tell him my secret shame. But you only you don't have long before you're 35. And you don't have long to live. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to do to get knighted in that time? The next couple of years, all right. I, I me, reckon I got... To me, that's heaps of time. What, two years? Uh, Will you climb yeah. Jess's Mount Erebus? Ew. <laughs> I, I, I didn't fully understand what she meant by Neither that. I, I'm not I'm sure <laughs> either. Wait, what are we talking about again? Anyway, I'm not talking for these 10 minutes. Stop talking to me. He's not talking for 10 minutes. All right. In 1911, <laughs> Norwegian explorer Roald Amundsen reached the South Pole. So the first ever person. He beat Scott by five weeks. This is who I remember learning about. So he's the Norwegian guy. Well. Yes. Amundsen. And uh, Scott was Robert Falcon Scott, the guy that... Some people say it was a bit of a dick. He was also trying to get there at the same time. He made it five weeks after Amundsen had, and then on the way back, he died in his tent. Oh, I was about to tease him, but he died. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. I was about to be like, take that fuck. Oh, no. Oh, no. And, they, and they know what happened because they found him frozen to death in his tent with his diary. Oh, handy. Yeah. I am dying. It, it pretty much. It said, like, you know, all is lost. Oh, shit. Because I had to go... No, Matt, 10 minutes isn't up. You put that microphone away. No, nah, Matt, take... you can comment. Rest <laughs> in peace, Scott. You can say it. Was that what you were going to say? What were you going to say? I was going to say, uh, yeah, talk about a diary. <laughs> <laughs> well worth it, sir. That was such a Warnicky joke. You've been spending too much time I'm really together. really sorry. I, I, can you edit that out, please? No, nah, leave it. I don't want that sort of shit getting around. <laughs> you, um... Bagged out one of your schoolmates from Cambridge. Because <laughs> you were also alive Scotty. in 1914. <laughs> yeah, me and Scotty go way back. Because you're old. Oh, hang on. I <laughs> <laughs> did it. Oh, fuck. That's the catchphrase. I did do that. Do you I do that a bit? Yeah, oh. it's great. Have you not noticed I've been saying that in our messages a lot lately? No, I, yeah. I didn't realise it was oh, a thing. Oh, hang on. You oh. say it all the time. It's the best. <laughs> and Dave just says, um, guys. <laughs> Do I? Yeah, no. that does ring a bell. Um, guys, <laughs> can we stay focused, please? 
Sorry, Dad. Despite the... Uh, you can call me Dad if you like. <laughs> Despite the public acclaim that greeted Shackleton's achievements during his Nimrod expedition, he was unsettled. He wanted to achieve more. I get that. The news of Amundsen's conquest of the South Pole reached Shackleton in March 1912, to which he responded, The discovery of the South Pole will not be the end of the Antarctic exploration. The next work, he said, would be a transcontinental journey from sea to sea crossing the pole, which to me sounds like someone did it and he was like, oh, hang on, yeah. I've got to create a new job now. Yeah. How about we do it, but I'm moonwalking the whole time. <laughs> huh? Huh? No one's uh-huh. done that before, have they? Check the records, check the records. No, they haven't. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> but at the same so, time, kind of a, a nice yet. positive attitude. Like, he, d- he didn't give up. He wasn't yeah, that like, it, it, is adv- it is admirable. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Shackleton needed money to fund his new trip. He estimated it would cost £50,000, current value £4.3 million. Yeah, that's about right. Or about eight and a half million Aussie dollars. That's so and many that was, Aussie dollars. And that was just to carry out the simplest version of his plan. The British government put in £10,000. That's not enough. It's he a did, fifth of the way there. No, but he did not believe in appeals to the public. He said, quote, they cause endless bookkeeping worries. <laughs> Only if he had Patreon... How much I know, better? right? They take care of it for you. The bookkeeping worries. That's right. If you'd like to donate ten thousand pounds, which these days is the equivalent of <laughs> one million pounds per month, we'll hey, fly you hey. to Antarctica. <coughs> we would accept. I wouldn't we say would. No. We'd accept. We'd accept a million pounds, would we not? I'm going to allow it. Okay, great. <laughs> we will only take um, donations in pound form if it's one million plus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Less yeah. than a million is just. Don't insult us. It's endless bookkeeping worries, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, playwright. Shucky gets it. <laughs> he got it. Playwright and Peter Pan creator J.M. Barry put in £10,000. What? Which is like the million dollars I was talking about. That's cool. A Scottish industrialist, a guy named Sir James Cadd, donated £24,000. Current value. Two million pounds or four million dollars. Oh, mate, go twenty-five, please. Twenty-four 20, oh. is a weird number. <laughs> I love that. That that's your reaction. Yeah. Just take it back. Take well, no, like you give me another thousand or take or, four back and just give me twenty. Twenty or twenty-five. What's twenty-four? If you, Maybe that's just what I had on him. Well, the then time. just give twenty. You'd be terrible at an auction, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> All done. Six hundred ninety-six thousand. No, I want to pay seven hundred. <laughs> I'd like to pay. <laughs> Okay, third time. Actually, that's that's only seven tenths of a million. I'd like to pay three quarters of a million. You know, seven hundred fifty thousand. You know, there's no way I would work in fractions. I do not know how that works at all. <laughs> Fine, take a million. Take it. That sounds like a big number to me. <laughs> uh, Don't let me go to an auction, please. He acquired for fourteen thousand oh. pounds a three hundred ton, no. three masted ship called Polaris. Fifteen or ten, fuck. Which he renamed Endurance. Oh. Uh, the Endurance, which uh, Shackleton named after his family motto. Which was Endurance. <laughs> <laughs> I never make Matt laugh. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> his family motto is... Jess, do you want to do, do the translation? You know Latin, don't you? Yeah. Fortitude. <laughs> Vincimus. What does that mean, Jess? Fortitude. <laughs> it means... I've, I've said that so wrong. What, was, what Can I read it? Fortitude, Dean. Vincimus. No, it's more fun if you just go with what I said. I believe it means... By endurance, we conquer. <laughs> Incredibly translated. I, yeah, if I remember my Latin classes correctly. Which you do, because I've Googled it, and that's right. Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much. Well fortititude vincimus is... Fortititude. So, what, <laughs> so can you break that down? What does fortititus mean? Uh, it, it's mostly in the... In, in, in something. In powering. By endurance. By endurance. Right. We conquer. We conquer. Gotcha. Got it, Matt? Sorry. Sorry I asked such a fucking dumb question. <laughs> nah, good on you. <laughs> no, uh, hang on. No. They also... I forgot what my thing was. <laughs> they also bought Australian explorer Douglas Mawson's expedition ship Aurora, which was lying in Hobart, Tasmania. It was lying there? Lying. So Mawson's and Wait, Australian... so it wasn't in Hobart, Tasmania? Yeah, then. and he used to be on the money. Yes, wearing like one of some sort of mufti hat. 
And he oh. had like a beard or a mustache. Yeah, just one of those things that covers everything but your face. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. No, I, know muf- what you mean. I don't know what mufti even means. I meant like furry. Pretty sure. It, I was thinking like a big Russian hat. It's a mufti, uh, an Islamic <laughs> scholar. <laughs> That he was, was definitely wearing, not the right word. Wearing an Islamic scholar around his face and had a mustache. Yeah, muf- that's yeah. I meant like a grand. Mufti. I meant I meant like f- furry, not mufti. You, you meant furry mufti? mufti? Is a great word. Furry mufti? Is that what you're saying? No, I don't know what I meant. I was I I remember it now. Yeah, he was wearing a balaclava with a big eye hole for his whole face. That's right. Through the mufti, you could see a the man's worst face. like a worst bank robber. Balaclava ever. Exposing <laughs> the entire face. Yeah. <laughs> also handing out, out all your good bits. Handing out business cards yeah. with your details. Yeah. yeah. Adding everyone on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put the money in the bag. How do you spell your last name? <laughs> Why? I'm just adding you on Facebook. <laughs> I'm trying to explain. I'm adding you on LinkedIn. Yeah. I'd really like to work at this bank one day. I'm going to tag you in a post later. It's going to be sick. <laughs> I'm starting a comedy room. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> Uh, some of the adventure was also paid by selling the film and photo rights. So they took along a pr- uh, photographer, which I'll talk about in, in a minute. Mm. Uh, the plan uh, for them was the 14 men would land, of whom six under Shackleton would form the Transcontinental Party. This group with 69 Canadian sled dogs, motor sledges and equipment would undertake the 2,900 kilometre journey to the Ross Sea. So from one side of Antarctica, they'd walk all the way to the other. The remaining eight people would stay and carry out scientific work. The Ross Sea Party, which is the second sea party, they had two ships, remember? Mm -hmm. They would go to the end of the journey on the opposite side and they would go inland and lay... uh, Eggs. They would lay eggs. No, they would put... um, (laughs) Set up little uh, deposits of supplies, eggs. including eggs, <laughs> so that way it would be easier for the men when they get halfway there. T- they don't. They could start picking up supplies. Eggs, <laughs> mostly eggs. <laughs> That's the plan, Jess. It's an egg-based plan. Sounds like they've uh... they've really cooked this egg. <laughs> well, what's it sound like they've done that? Oh, some shit egg joke. <laughs> no, nah, good on you. I haven't been paying attention. Zoned out. I was thinking about fractions. Uh, can you recap? Recap. Uh, recap. <laughs> Two groups of men. One's on one side of the Antarctica. One's on the other. The ones on uh, the the end of the journey go halfway to the middle and drop off shit for the other men so they can walk one, from one side to the other and have food on the way. Sweet. So they're cheating. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> look. <laughs> if you could look Ernest Shackoton in the face and tell him, is it cheat? Good on you. I did. In, uh, Canon did. did. 1914. In uni, yeah. Uh, of the 5,000 men that applied, 28 were chosen for each ship. So there's 56 of these guys in total. Uh, William it's a Link- lot of eggs. <laughs> what, for 56 you men? You need a lot of eggs. Well, you got eggs you- on your brain. I don't eat eggs. <laughs> so it's weird that, I've, that, I'm, that I'm obsessed with them. <laughs> it's weird. Jess, the oh. eggs are in you. Ew. <laughs> You're full of eggs. I'm part of who you are. Yuck. No, that's a fact. Well, it might not be a fact. I don't know. Stop it. It's possible. <laughs> You're an egg-making machine. Stop it. In some ways, you could be. Yuck. Are you not thinking about your eggs? No, I'm not thinking about my eggs. Matt, do I have eggs? <laughs> I don't fully know how it works, but I'm pretty sure all humans make eggs. Really? <laughs> For breakfast? <laughs> no, no. Not necessarily, but they make them every, inside their Every uterus. human being no. inherently knows how to make eggs. <laughs> It's just a survival mechanism. It's how we no, develop. No, not, e- not everyone. Some can't. Some but can't make eggs. Most it, Not do. even scrambled in the microwave. Even I can do that. Ew. Yeah. No, you can't do that. You can't even make a toasted sandwich. You burn sandwich. toast. All right, you call me. I can't make it. <laughs> you can't make, can't make You'll eggs. You'll never make it. I'll never make it as an egg man. <laughs> no. I'm the walrus. I am not goo- the egg man. Goo goo kachook. That's not right, is it? <laughs> I loved that a lot. That song? No, just that whole You just like egg humour. You're yeah. an egg humorist. I'm all about the yolks. Is that that's a joke? Is that's that a good. joke pun that's or a, a pun. yuck? Are you doing a yuck yuck pun or a joke? What's that meant to sound like? Jokes. This was jokes. Really jokes. Okay, great. Yolks. I mean, both good. Thank you. <laughs> but not. This is awful. We've done too many bad ones already. Do Only one. quality jokes from now on, guys. Okay, got it. Do they still have to be egg based? <laughs> they have to be egg. Of course, they've got to be egg. I said only quality jokes. <laughs> egg based, like a quiche. 
What were you saying? Yeah, free range. I'm going to talk. I'm giving you free range on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, nah, all good from here, all right? <laughs> Fuck, I feel right. gross. I'm going to talk about some of the people on the on the journey now. Okay. I'm going to try and be as exact as I can. No, no more. Yeah. People are turning off. They're changing no, they're the not. channel. They're turning it up. No, they've gone to the kitchen to see if they've got eggs. They're like, oh, I feel like eggs. And now we're sponsored by eggs. This episode brought to you by the good people that make eggs. <laughs> Chickens. <laughs> William Lincoln Bakewell was taken on as able seaman. Can't bake endurance. without eggs. True. He endurance. bakes well. I'm so sorry. He was able seaman. Got it. Uh, his friend, Pierce... He, wait, he was able seaman. <laughs> yes. He was just looking for some eggs. <laughs> That's how it works, Matt. You get the able seaman, you get the able eggs, you've got a baby. I'm thinking of able Tasman. There Ab- we go. Yeah. Yep. Able seaman, what Able's does that mean? Able's just a name. It's just a rank. No, it's, an able, it's a job. You're the able seaman. <laughs> able. It's like, you can do it. Hang on. That's Able Tasman was wait, his name. No, when you... Th- wasn't it? Sorry, did you think that I said he was taken on as Abel Seaman, <laughs> that he had to change his name to yeah. join the no. ship? No. I was very confused. No. Hello, Ernest wasn't Shackleton. was Abel Tasman's name? I thought Abel it might have been Tasman? one of those theater, yes, that's his theater name. cruises. So that's what I said. I said it's a name. <laughs> anyway, there's a I thought, I thought it might have been one of them theater, um, theater dinner cruises where he, had to, he came on <laughs> yeah, playing the role Rocky of Abel Seaman. Yeah, as Rocky in the Seaman. Rocky Horror Picture Show. The role of Abel Seaman tonight will be played by <laughs> William Lincoln Bakewell. <laughs> Boo, he's shit. <laughs> Saw him last week in the Titanic Theatre restaurant. <laughs> Did not know how to freeze to death. <laughs> his friend, so Lincoln Bakewell, and I just want to talk about his friend, Pierce Blackborough, who was not hired because of his youth. He was only 18, he was inexperienced, and he was not qualified to go to Antarctica. Not a very good thespian. <laughs> he was not. He had not been denied. <laughs> Fearing the endurance was shorthanded, Bakewell, so the able seaman, helped Blackborough sneak aboard and hid him in a locker. Oh. On day three at sea, he was discovered. Fucking hell, that would have been an awful time. Was I'm he... picturing like a high school locker. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. It was probably like a big room. Mm, it was probably like a massive room with a big, big comfortable bed. He probably and, like, had the penthouse. Yeah, he probably the, had the like... The penthouse locker. <laughs> he would have had a bunch of DVDs. Oh, he would have been fine. He was fine. And like room service. Oh, Yeah. Unlimited downloads. I'll have a club sandwich, and I would like to watch Monsters University, please. <laughs> I'd like to you watch just put the DVD in. I want you to, when you bring the sandwich. Can you put that in for me, please? Please. On being discovered, Shackleton met the boy and went on a tirade. Lost it. <laughs> when finishing his, did you perf- write that down? No, I didn't. Actually. Oh, I'd leave. Uh, but when he finished his performance, uh, people say that he sort of just put on a bit of a show to sort of assert his leadership. Yeah. When he finished his performance, he said to Blackborough, "Do you know that on these expeditions we often get very hungry, and if there is a stowaway available, he is the first to be eaten." To which Blackborough, the guy in the locker, replied. They'd get a lot more meat off you, sir. <laughs> oh, cheeky. Shackleton hit a grin and after chatting with one of the crew said, introduce him to the cook first. He pro- <laughs> Sounds like a bloody and jolly good time. Him, they made there. him walk the plank and he died. No, no, no. They, he proved an asset <laughs> to the ship. They made him walk the plank oh. and he died. That was after he proved himself as an <laughs> asset to the ship as a steward. He's eventually signed on properly. So he's just uh, sort of like showing people to their seats and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but this way. Oh, E17. Very good, sir. Did you say East 17? E. Everybody East 17. A, a beautiful, beautiful album. <laughs> I'll get that right away. <laughs> Ding. Excuse me, uh, steward. Can I just have the latest copy of East 17's third album? And But of course. But of course. Uh, an excellent choice. <laughs> Other key members of this story. So we've got the young, young, young bloke, Blackborough. Uh, we've got uh, second in charge, Frank Wilde. Frank Wilde from National Tar. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Wilde was a veteran explorer who had been with Shackleton on both the Discovery and Nimrod expeditions. He'd been there with Shackleton and Scott when they were just 97 miles from the South Pole. Shackleton gave Wilde his last biscuit when they were all sick and starving. Aww. So they're very tight. That's cute. Trust each other his a last lot. Biscuit. He had a, it was like an Arnott's All Sorts. Sort of <laughs> it was a good and one. And it was a Monte Carlo. Was a Monte Carlo. Yeah, or was it, the, it was the last one. It was an orange cream. Oh, I was yuck. like, oh, no Fuck wonder he's giving creams. it away. Piece of shit. 
The last yeah. biscuit in one of those packets is the one you give away. Uh, for, yeah, yeah, at first Frank Wilde was like, what a gesture, and then he thought, what a fucking prick. <laughs> I'd prefer to die <laughs> slightly that, sooner. Yeah. <laughs> what, two minutes sooner than the energy that this one biscuit will give me? Uh, there was Frank Worsley, who was the captain of the How Endurance. Many Franks are there? Oh, Franks. Uh, this is the second of three Franks. Uh, he was the a very skilled navigator. Frank Hurley. You went early calling too many Franks. The very next name was another Frank. Yeah. Why hasn't that blown your mind? Because I'm a genius. Uh, Frank Hurley was the... Ast- <laughs> that makes that adds up. <laughs> Frank Hurley was the Australian photographer on board Ooh. who documented the trip with photos and videos. He'd okay, now you're a tiger. Now you love the camera, <laughs> darling. Yeah! <laughs> Walk the plank. Walk the plank. Ooh. <laughs> Now you right. hate it. Now you're cheeky. Give me cheeky. Oh, put your finger in your mouth. You're real cheeky, aren't you? What? He's Is that Australian. Austin Powers? <laughs> oh, <laughs> vomit up those canapes to keep your size four pants. Oh, don't eat that last biscuit. A lifetime on the hips. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> Is that fashion lingo? Yeah. yeah. So that's how fashion works. Fashion. 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 <laughs> you can hear his teeth click when he says it. Fashion. Hey, what's my catchphrase again? Oh, hang on. Oh, hang on. I, it's yeah. very close to our show title. Do go on. Do hang on. Do hang on. Uh, final person I'll talk about for now is... Is it Frank? No, it's Harry. Ugh. Mick Nish. Ooh. Harry feels like it's in the world of Frank. Yeah, but... Frank and Harry. But can you imagine how left out he felt? Harry uh, McNish. McNish is great. Uh, he is a carpenter. Ooh. He brought a cat with him called Mrs. Chippy. That's a, that's a dumb cat name. Oh, it's... Oh, why Mrs. It, why is it a Mrs. Why are you bringing a cat well, on a boat? Well, it gets worse because a few oh. weeks into the trip, they discovered he was a boy, but the name had already stuck, so they kept calling this cat Mrs. Chippy. Why does that? Why does it make it worse, Dave? Yeah, why does, does that make, make it worse? worse? Oh no, the cat that doesn't <laughs> understand English. The name is has got a dumb stupid regardless. name. <laughs> oh, but to add insult to injury, <laughs> the boy cat has been getting called a feminine name. Oh no! Well, I'm just this giving this cat worst. a bit more respect. You're a fucking piece of shit, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. I'm just saying that the cat was intelligent enough to know that Mrs. Chippy was a fucked name. That's a dumb name. Uh, the, pa- the cat was very popular with the men on board, and oh. when he fell overboard, they turned the ship around to go back and oh, get him. Oh, that's adorable. Isn't that lovely? They love the cat. They ran out of uh, boat petrol. Yeah. <laughs> a mere two miles yeah. from shore. That Wind? Round, that round... <laughs> boat petrol, Jess, please. <laughs> But oh, sorry, I'm not up with the nautical yeah. terms. They I don't definitely know. had starboard? a starboard. Is that a thing? I don't they know. definitely had a, a, a boiler on board. They had an engine. Boat petrol. Boat petrol. It had. It's fine, boat uh, boat on petrol. the endurance with Shaq, there was also just quickly going through this: two surgeons, a geologist, a biologist, physicist, and a meteorologist, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> there were no ufologists on board. Disappointing. So, Stanton Fried Man not didn't get the call up. Oh. He was on the five thousand. Didn't make the short, he made the short list, but not the short short list. You know what I'm saying? Shako, Shakoton. Shakoton. Shakiloton. Should have just been Shakoton, shouldn't it? Fucking, it should have been anything other than anything you've said. Uh, endurance left without Shackleton. It left, left Plymouth on the 8th of August, 1914, heading for Buenos Aires. Ooh. South America. Tick. Well done. done yes! We don't have to go back. Uh, Shackleton, who travelled on a faster ship, rejoined the expedition in Buenos Aires. Why was his ship faster? More boat petrol? Oh, because he'd been left behind oh, on a smaller, faster ship. Yeah. Uh-huh. He'd been left behind because he was still organising yeah, shit. Boat. He, he was using his cats for petrol. <laughs> Shovel in more cats. <laughs> is that no. a Simpsons thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> definitely is. A couple of weeks earlier, World War One had started. Uh-oh. Shaq offered his men and ship to help the cause, but they were... Not needed. Not cool. called out. They're like, no, no. <laughs> no, no, we got this. You do your thing. We got this. I think we got this. Um, I think this thanks, should be Andy. over by the end of the month. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You guys have got stuff on. It's a little uprising. No big deal. Don't worry about it. We'll quell this. We'll quell this uprising. We'll quell it? We'll quell it. Mm-hmm. And then we'll win it. <laughs> and then we'll bin it. And then we'll high five it. After it's in the bin. We're going to high five it. Then we'll wash our hands. There we go. And we'll thank the Lord. Oh. What? <laughs> What's happening? It was a different time. <laughs> You've got to wash your hands before you thank the oh, Lord. Oh, my God. I'm not an think, animal. Do you think he wants your bloody sticky hands all over he his knows prayer where books? Be. He bloody knows where they're Oh, been. he bloody does. He invented bins. Yeah, they've been I all over. I think he's cool with it. And sticky things. They've been all over the 
their mountains, if you know what I'm saying. Still don't know what that means. On the 26th of October, the ship sailed for the South Atlantic, so it left South America, uh, arriving in South Georgia Island a couple of weeks later. After one month of waiting at the whale hunting station on Georgia Island, the Endurance set off for Antarctica. So they stopped for a bit for better weather. Ah. Stopped for a month on this very remote island that's just north, I believe, of Antarctica. The (laughs) party encountered pack ice. Are they having a party? Well, they were partying, and then they discovered they encountered pack ice. That's the worst when you have a party and you run out of ice. So that is pretty good news. Yeah, they discovered some pack ice. Like, oh, thank God, because I was about to send Steve up to the shop. Back yeah. Over the servo. Back to <laughs> South Georgia Island servo. Much earlier than expected, they, disco- they uh, encountered this pack ice, and they had to manoeuvre through it quite carefully, which slowed them down a lot. Easy. 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 You just go like this. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> Do that thing. <laughs> Like backing a trailer? You're We're timing about, backing a trailer. Yeah. <laughs> Am I doing back there, boys? Easy. Easy. Am I there on the left? Got plenty of room on the left. Hang on. No, shit, you're in the flower bed. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. You're in the pack of us. Oh, Mum is pissed. This is not good. How am I going to get out of this? You're on your own, Steve. <laughs> Shaq, catch you later. Bye. Uh, at one point, they got stuck for 24 hours. They had hoped that the ice would be much looser and Loosier, looser, <laughs> and easier. You're a loosier. Loosier. What a, a loosier. Which was a word at the time. Oh. It was a different time. <laughs> Language is always evolving. It's, so, it? it's slow fluid or loosier. <laughs> to quote the times. <laughs> uh, they hoped it would be looser and easier to smash through. Because they're in a kind of ship that is so, supposed to be able to smash through ice. But it's much thicker than they thought. On fi- the 15th of January, so this is a, a few months in. Endurance came abreast of a great glacier, the edge of which formed a bay, which appeared a good landing, so they could sort of stop there and land. However, Shackleton considered it too far north, and uh, except under a pressure of necessity, he said, would they land there? This was a decision they would later regret. So they had the opportunity to get off. Let's not forget that. Okay. Because after six weeks of travelling through the ice and still 100 miles from the actual continent of Antarctica, so there's ice, but this isn't actually Antarctica, it's just sort of the start of the ice that gets you there, they arrived at extremely thick ice. They sat in the ice and waited to see if it would clear. This is, in hindsight, not a good decision because the temperature dropped from 20 degrees Fahrenheit above to 20 degrees below the ice froze solid around the ship oh no suddenly they're in like the middle of ice looking around going hang on oh no all right get all the kettles we have (laughs) boil the kettle (laughs) and then we'll have it then we'll have a cup of tea and we'll think about it yeah because that'll crack the windshield if you just pour it straight on no yeah you can't you can't go hot water onto coal you cannot crack the antarctic windshield you can't also i just realized this entire time i've been thinking of them basically in like a First fleet boat, but like this is 1914, they had a better boat than that, didn't they? It's better, but it's not like a, I'm thinking sailboat. It is a well, it was a wooden boat with three masts. When was when was okay, the yeah, Titanic? Right, that's what I was thinking. That was a... yeah, soon after, right? So it's, it looks oh, yeah, like okay. that, I guess. Yeah, that's no, a... it was more of a it's wooden, it's wooden, yeah. Because ah. it's not a that's a cruise liner, and this is like, are oh, they not on a cruise liner? No, there's, there's only one pool, Matt, but it's not got, several. It does have room service and beautiful Deep lockers. It, and it's got a copy of Monsters University. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine getting on board a ship that you're going to be on for possibly many months, you know, discovering I, that's I, the only DVD. Oh, boy. Fuck. I was, just, I was just reliving an experience I had when I was in Vegas. I ordered room service one day and watched Monsters University. <laughs> I wasn't even being creative there at I'm all. I'm assuming you were hungover. There was a, there was yeah, a, yeah, I was in Vegas. Sure, sorry, for <laughs> a dumb yeah. question. There was a lot of truth to that story. <laughs> yeah, there was There's not a lot of imagination in Matt's story. <laughs> were you also locked in a locker, stowed yeah. away? Yeah. Uh-huh. You weren't allowed to be in that hotel room, were you? No. They paid for a two-bedroom, a two-bed. There was three of you. Yep, fact. After ten days of inactivity stuck in the ice... The ship's fires were banked to save fuel. Oh. Ship fuel. Ship fuel. <laughs> oh, so they turned it ship, off. Uh, boat petrol, he called it. Excuse me. Uh, ship boat fuel. petrol. Sorry. Goodness. Boat petrol. I'm, I'm, I don't know the technical terms. Well, you're embarrassing us all, Dave. It's meant to be educational, please. I will make... All right, we'll pause here. I'll go away. I'll do some sort of ship-based apprenticeship and, and we'll come back. Do some push-ups while you're at it. Yeah, please. <laughs> What does that got to do with anything? I, I have a powerful mind, not a powerful body. Well, we want a powerful body. 
Yeah. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Your chest could use some work, though. The chest? Yeah. Okay, anything else? Uh, maybe your side obliques. Mm. Side obliques. I just like saying that. Obliques. Saw that on an infomercial once. Google. Really works your side obliques. But that's I'm not in that weird. But I don't think you need Becky to say voice. side obliques. Is that like, aren't they obliques? just obliques? Works your midsection. Yeah. Upper, lower, and side obliques. That's <laughs> so what the guy said. It was like body by Jake sort of thing. <laughs> you got a Jake, you got a chin. <laughs> <laughs> you got a side, you got an oblique. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're a gastropod, then you're a slug. But then what are you watching my show for? What are you watching? <laughs> don't fucking waste my time, slug. <laughs> you keep on walking. You don't even walk. I don't even know what to say to you. Don't keep on crawling, you slimy Jesus. fucker. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, I love this episode. I'm having so much fun. I'm like the last 67 episodes. I'm so worried that this this episode will go longer than the actual journey of the endurance. No, we're fine. Keep we've going. Got, we've got endurance. We've got endurance. So the, the ships turned off. They turned off the engines. Strenuous efforts were made to release her. Release her! Re- re- release, <laughs> release the slugs! <laughs> the ice won't know what hit it. The army of slugs! <laughs> Release the slug army. The slugmy. So I'm not sure if we could call it an army. There's only six slugs. I said release the slug army. (laughs) (laughs) They haven't been breeding like we thought they would. (laughs) We brought only boy slugs. (laughs) Only boy slugs. It turns out that they can't change gender. They are not hermaphroditic like some other species. I was misinformed on the slug matter. Never mind. Release the slugs. Release the slugs. It appears that we are still stuck in the ice and we now have six dead slugs. (laughs) My plan has backfired. Fortunately, I have a backup plan. I will act like a slug myself and chew our way out of this. (laughs) Release the slug costumes. This is all real time. It's a real, it's a real time, heaven. I will act like this is like. Oh, it's very good. All right, so to sum, to sum up, the stuck on the ice. Shackleton orders the men out there with ice chisels, picks, saws, whatever they've got, shovels to try and uh, chop away through the ice. But the labour proved futile. The slugs failed. Did they try kettles? They did not. They did not. Mm. They were not ingenious. Kettles had not been invented. Oh. It was lamented. cold tea. Yuck. (laughs) Cold tea. They're going to have a lot of cold shit on this journey. I'm going to tell you that right now. They didn't have any dynamite or explosives. They couldn't blast the ship out. Prepare the dynamite. (laughs) We uh, used the area for the dynamite and filled it with slugs. (laughs) The slugs have proved to be a double-edged sword. Oh, so good. Oh, they tried in vain, but they couldn't break through the ice, and they started to drift <laughs> north. So the ice, so it's it's floating, but it's solid for them around them. So it starts to f- to float, and with them, with them stuck mm. in it. So they just start to see that they're moving every single day. It was realised that they would have to spend a winter stuck on the ice and wait for warmer weather to release them when the ice got further north and they got better <laughs> weather. This is not a good scenario. Release the boat. <laughs> 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 So it is not working. We now have one dead bolt on the ice. Everyone together now. On the count of three, we all need to. Ready? One, two, three. Release the... Jones, you're not doing it. So it turns out that everyone chanting release the bolt has little to no effect. (laughs) Interesting. Do we have any more slugs? (laughs) No, sir. I'm afraid Mrs. Chippy ate the last slug. Is my slug costume back from the dry cleaners yet? Well, yeah. boys, looks like we're fucked. <laughs> I'm ru- I've thought of two slug-based ideas, <laughs> and I've got nothing else. <laughs> so his next decision was uh, that the dogs were taken off board and housed in ice kennels. They were dogs? Or dog loos. 69 Canadians led dogs. Excuse me, dog loos? Dog loos for the, like, for, like igloo for Fuck dog loo. off. Is that, that is the cutest thing I've ever heard in my life. Did you make that up, Dave? 
I did not actually quote this. Quoted, quoted the source. They referred to them as dogloos. Oh my god, it's so yeah. cute! Is it just oh, like a god. little igloo? Oh, uh, the, the little doggies. The ships. So they're, they're, it's warmer for them to be off in the ice than on the ship. Well, igloos are alright. Well, yeah, no, right. they uh, the ship's interior was converted to suitable winter quarters, so they needed to make more room for the men inside. Right. Because these are Canadian sled dogs, so they're used to being outside, but men. Less so. Less so. I wonder how many dogs to a dogloo, or did they have individual ones? Because that's a lot of dogloos. 69 dogloos. 69. One each. Nice. One each. No, Fuck. I'm not sure. I don't know. Oh, That'd man. be amazing. That'd be so That'd cute. Be so I'm, oh I'm picturing God, them really small, up. like kennels, but yeah, yeah they're, they're probably... I think they are. Yeah, well, you just Ice have one kennels. each, right? Oh, it's so cute. All lined up? Yeah, and they've got little, little boxes out the front, so they can... Well, send each other mail. You can visit each other. Telegram for Mr. Chips. 69 dogs. How much See, space must have been take, taken up by dog food? Take one more dog. <laughs> Just <laughs> so pissed off it's not a round number. Why the fuck? 69? You, take you 69 got a problem with 69? You don't think six, six, Look at the number. It is the most round number there is. No, no mate. No, no, no. Don't try and sway me on that. No. Look at it. Just look at it. It's take a beautiful one more dog. number. Take one more dog. 70 dogs. 69 dogs. 69 is the magic number. Like, what if they're trying to pair up for, you know, activities? Uh, threesomes. Oh, come on. Mate. Three goes into 69. Yeah, 23 threesomes. Oh. Or one sixty nine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a chain of dogs. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, in a big circle. <laughs> they connect up. Yeah, yeah. It's the holy trinity. Stop it. Just saying. Take one more dog. Do go on. Uh, they set up the inside of the ship for winter quarters for various groups of men, officers, scientists, engineers, seamen, all sticking together. <laughs> oh, God, sticking. You did that on purpose. A wireless apparatus was rigged, but their location was too remote for them to transmit signals, so no one knew where they were. They couldn't call for help. Oh. Shackleton knew of a ship a few years earlier that had come stuck in a similar area, and after six months of drifting, was able to break free and then carry on with its mission like nothing happened. So that was his hope. He thought, we'll wait out winter. For six months. Six months. But when we get out, we'll still be able to keep going on the journey. You'd go mental. That is a bit of a worry on this, on this journey, which I can tell you, sadly, has only just begun for the men. Oh. Uh, to start with, the rate of the drift in the ice was very slow. At the end of March, Shackleton calculated that the ship had travelled... 95 miles or 153 no, kilometres. I would walk 95 <laughs> miles. Oh, 95, Jess. So close to the ton. Yeah. That's, Nin- that's... I don't, I don't, 95 I don't hate, but like, come on, 100. So fives, basically. Yeah, I like fives. <laughs> so you're the kind of person who... Can only do changing, five times tables, yes. But vo- on the volume control, do you have it, does it come up on the TV with yeah. like numbers? Yeah. You do it in fives. Yeah. Even if it's too loud uh, or too quiet. No, pro- probably just e- uh, evens then. Okay. Yeah. So, like, 24 is okay. 24 is okay. 26. You're a, you're a bloody complex animal. Yeah, I am. That's okay. <laughs> Imagine being stuck on a ship with her. <laughs> Fuck. It's tedious. Where, where does your weird number rule come in on this? How many <laughs> eggs am I allowed to order for breakfast? But that's the thing. It doesn't bother me with, like, other people. It but- seems like it does. Oh yeah, good point. And yeah, don't. I mean everything. I mean, I mean, you weren't on the endurance, and you've been pissed off a lot. That's a good point. Wow, I've got Frank. I've got some things to consider. Thank you for (laughs) bringing this to my attention. I, I kind of had a, I kind of thought I was a fairly mellow person, kind of go with the flow, kind of gal. But uh, I'm learning, but I'm not. Uh, So they'd only travelled that distance. since the 19th of January, so they're you know, not that much in, in about six weeks. However, as winter set in, the speed of the drift increased and the conditions of the ice surrounding them changed. On the 14th of April, as it got colder, Shackleton recorded the nearby pack ice piling and rafting against the masses of ice and he felt as if the ship was going to be caught in the disturbance and crushed like an egg shell. <laughs> there he is, eggs. He did it. He did it. He did it. In the winter months, Major... Excellent. There he is, eggs. That's what he said. <laughs> we just let him do it. There he is, eggs. Oh, eggs, there and he is. And there's eggs. <laughs> uh, in the winter months of May, June and July, it was completely dark 24 hours a day. What, you just... And very cold. And they're just all stuck on a boat. Yeah. Stuck on a boat or oh. ice. It's not real... Uh, there's no real land around, I should say. Beneath them is... They can stand on it because it's really solid ice, but it's not proper land. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Oh, he's such a snooty Unlike bastard, Iceland. Yeah. 
It's not real land, is it? Not like where I'm from, Australia. That's real land. And we have heaps of it. Some would say too much. We don't even use the middle bit. Uh, Shackleton was concerned to maintain fitness, training and morale. Although the scope for activity was limited, the High dog... knees, high knees, chin up, <laughs> up, 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 up. The dogs were exercised and occasionally raced competitively. Exercised, like as in they were, they were demons in them. <laughs> Like performed exorcisms okay. nightly. I actually needed that full explanation. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm with you. Stop doing physical acting. I will out. never stop. <laughs> Men were encouraged to take moonlight walks. They played oh, so- romantic. How yeah, beautiful. They in, played- a, in, in a permanently dark time. Oh, yeah. So- yeah, so, so the moon was the only thing that would light up the. Just at night. So in the day it was dark. Yeah, in the day it was darker during the day than at night. Weird. Amazing. That's weird. In the lighter months, they played soccer on the ice. And aboard the ship, they attempted to put on plays. Oh, my God. And once a week, they had a gramophone concert. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Once a month. No, once a week. week. Oh, once a week. I've seen, I've seen a photo that is captioned that the men were having a haircutting tournament. That's weird. I'm not sure what the competition is, but they all seem to have... Shaved heads. Who looks the best? The real loser was fashion. <laughs> they look terrible. Fashion. fashion. No, a shaved head. That's a that's a style that will never go out. It's a strong look. It is a strong. It's on a bold a, look. On a good head. Have it's, you done it's that? It's a bold look. I've just. That's the one haircut I've never done. And I don't. I implore you not to. I the won't. one. Have you done a mohawk? Yep, done a mohawk. Mullet. You have not. Done have you a done mullet. a mohawk? I've done a mullet. Oh my god. Well, that's. I haven't done a I've mohawk. I've done the Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> I've done the Rachel, yeah. I've done the Monica. Yeah, the I've done the Ross. I've done the Chandler Bing. I've Tell me, more. you didn't do the Ross. <laughs> it looked terrible. <laughs> it's, it's not, yeah, it's not a good one. Uh, the dogs kept up the men's morale, and four puppies were born. Oh, so there were some girl dogs. Oh, wait, Ooh. but that now we've got 73 dogs. Yeah. Is that, Is that cool? better? Oh, for fuck's sake. Kill I- one dog? No. Kill three dogs? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Your brain is messed up. <laughs> Not have two more. Kill three. I, no, I have two more. Yeah, I re- just attrition will, will take some out. Just mm. give them time. Yeah, Joe, you're right. You're not wrong, mate. The ice started to squeeze the ship and it started to list or lean. So it was something it was on more and more of an angle. It was feared the ship would be crushed, but there was a lull after the initial crush uh, of a few weeks before it happened again, but this time much worse. They could hear the ship being physically squeezed. Ugh. Holes were made below, Shit. holes were made below, and the ship started to fill with ice cold water. So they had to constantly bail it out and oh, no. pump it out. Huh, they were made by, they didn't make them themselves. So no, no, I'd the, call the that ice. a tactical error. Putting holes in the bottom. Yeah. This should help. Oh no, that's hang on. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Hang on. Let's make the hole bigger. <laughs> the water will drain out the bigger hole. It'll, it'll enter this hole and drain out this hole. Oh no, another hole. Take out the bottom of the boat. That, we don't need this. <laughs> That's trapping in the water. <laughs> if we let it all out, mm. we'll be safe. That didn't work. <laughs> um, we're all now in the water. In the the bottom of the boat was holding us in as well. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Thank God we've, we've gotten out of the evil clutches of that horrible, horrible boat. <laughs> yeah. We start our new life here. Under the sea. Under the sea. Under the sea. Under the sea. Uh, when the timbers broke, they made noises which the sailors later described as being similar to the sound of heavy fireworks and blasting guns. Uh, the supplies and three lifeboats were transferred to the ice. The crew attempted to shore up the boat's hull and pump out the water, but after a few days and in freezing temperatures, standing in water that was minus 25 degrees, Shackleton gave the order to abandon the ship. Abandon ship and slug. <laughs> leave the slugs. <laughs> no, I've got to bury them. Sl- oh, I won't leave no slug behind. <laughs> and the slug's like... <laughs> Is that what a slug does? Yep. Oh, the slug, there's still one kicking. Remember my family. <laughs> Tell my mother I'm a slug. <laughs> <laughs> she knows, mate, she knows. Come on, you can just fit in my pocket. Tell Come with me. Tell her. No, I'll never leave the ship. <laughs> What? It's, it's going down. Let's. Captain always goes down with the. You're not the captain. You're, you're the slug. slug. I'm not the captain. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm closing its little sluggy eyes. Close the eyes. <laughs> not, not captain. Its eyes not. on the end of those things. <laughs> 
antenna or something, maybe? That's good. Thank you. I didn't know. I didn't know I had those skills. Mm-hmm. The wreckage remained afloat, and over the following weeks, the crew salvaged further supplies and materials, including Hurley's photographs and cameras that he'd left behind. He had to wade through freezing water to get them, but he really wanted them. Photographers. We From around... <laughs> just post them online, mate. Mate. Put them in the cloud. Put them in the cloud. <laughs> Fucking cloud, mate. I hate it when you beat me to jokes. I'm but very also, quick. Uh, you are, and I'm always proud of you when you do, because I'm like, that's my boy. My that's boy. my friend, Maddie. He's funny. Anyway, I love you. From around 550 <laughs> photographic plates, Hurley chose the best 150, the maximum that could be carried, and Shaq ordered that he smash the rest to avoid the temptation of risking his life to come back for them later. So he chose the best 150, had to get rid of 400. Wow. That's okay. Okay. So but he it, kept 150. Kept 150. That's a nice you number. You like that? I'm okay with that. He kept the best 146. Oh, fuck off. Oh, fu- get four more or burn them all. <laughs> Can we just get a recount? <laughs> He's sitting there just going, look, I think I've got 150. It's about 150. It's, is that enough? I'm okay with that. Ignorance is bliss. I'm okay with thinking okay. it's 150 and it's 143. Because right, actually, care. I've <gasps> just read there's a note here that one of them was lost. So it's actually 149. Oh. That's not true, but I just like annoying you. <laughs> okay, so without a ship, their plan is a bit fucked. <laughs> They've... Is that what it says in the some diary? Of them, some, well, I just want to say that I think even Shackleton, who's pretty optimistic, has realised that they won't be making it to the South Pole on this journey. Uh, they were fucked in a lot of ways. <laughs> Shackleton's intention was now to march the crew westward to one of uh, several possible destinations. Before the march could begin, Shackleton ordered the weakest animals to be shot, Aww. including McNish's cat, Mrs. Chippy. How many dogs were shot? And the four pups. Oh, so there's still 69 69. Dogs. Wouldn't it have been more humane just to set them free and let them set up their own new cat cat and dog community definitely on the ice? Like you puppies. saw what happened with the camels in Australia, Matt. That's true. They'd, they'd, they'd run, run havoc. Pets. Carry the puppies or ice cats. kill for old dogs. Imagine how they would dogs. have evolved in ice the ice cat. cats. I mean, Ooh. sweet. Yeah. Would you not kill four old dogs? Yeah, I would have killed four old dogs. Like they've had a good run. It's still not. I mean, it's still an all. I mean, bloody Sophie's choice. But, but these, <laughs> but these are the weakest ones. <laughs> but they've got the most potential. Been, does yeah. it piss you off that they were allowed to keep the banjo <laughs> for morale? Oh, no, no, fuck banjo. Off. I, you always keep the banjo. Would you shoot four <laughs> dogs to save a banjo? Because I wouldn't. Ding 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 ding. That's the only fucking song you know. Yeah, and how good is it for your morale? Yeah. Like a ding, 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 but ding, But remember ding. when we killed that adorable puppy? Anyway, but a ding, 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 <laughs> yeah. any Rem- requests? Remember that song I played whilst you were bludgeoning the puppies to death? But a ding, 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 ding. ding. Uh, the mar- so they started marching without the pups, without the cat. It was very tough going on the I ice. I don't know what I've been told. Like that? They were doing that. But in three days, the party managed mm. to travel barely two miles, 3.2K. And when they looked back, they could still see the ship where they'd come from. That's the length of the Melbourne Cup. They only In walked... three days. The other mm. day, I went for a, a, just a casual stroll on a Sunday morning. Went for a walk. Uh, I walked 5Ks. Didn't even, didn't even mean it. It was just an easy walk. So, and these people can't do it in fucking three days. Three days, they've done three Ks. They just not. They just don't have the right attitude. They should do the couch to five k, and that I think that's a good app. Yeah, and interval training is really effective. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that was their problem. That was their problem. They just went they too hard too early. Should have done the beep test. Should have done the beep test. Fuck it, fuck the beep it, test. Beep test. Uh, they set up camp and called it Ocean Camp, and they kept salvaging things from the endurance until it finally sank beneath the ice. So, oh, oh shit! So okay. One day it was gone. And this is because they just waited when they should have forged on. Oh yeah, and they took point. and they took a. Well, I don't know. They sort of took a punt in keeping going mm. through the thick stuff, thinking that they'd be able to keep going, but then it just froze around them. That's fascinating. Mm. Uh, they were still drifting northerly on the ice, but not fast enough to get closer to land by the end of Because that was the next thing. Like, oh, we'll just keep going until we go north enough that we're near an island. Yeah, sure. But not, not quick enough. Uh, Shaq wanted to get closer to the islands north of their position so they wouldn't have to travel far in the lifeboats because they've only got small ships now. So on the 21st of December, he announced the second march to begin two days later. Oh, Christmas. Remember how badly that went last time? Because conditions had not improved since the earlier attempt. Temperatures had risen and now it was uncomfortably warm. Oh, what? With uh, men sinking to their knees in soft snow as they struggled to haul boats through pressure ridges. So they're dragging boats. 
I'm so dumb. I'm like, warmer? That's great. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah, that causes it's still all like, sorts of new issues. Mm. Still, like, in the low, low temperatures. You could have get your, got your thongs and your singlet on, though. Yeah, come on, boys. On the 27th of December, the ship's carpenter, Harry McNish, rebelled and refused to continue walking and working. And then what? <clears throat> then what, Harry? Then what? Hey? He, he argued the ship's articles, which is the agreement that they had to obey the leader, had lapsed since the endurance sinking, and since the ship no longer even existed, they were no longer under the order. So he was like, you're not my captain anymore. So what's he we're not do? even on the fucking ship. So what's he going to do? Like, I get that you're pissed, Harry, but let's use our words. Because you're all out in the middle of fucking nowhere. That is... Pr- Shackleton stood up to him. And uh, apparently uh, he stood down. So I reckon he probably said something pretty strong like that. Yeah, good for you. Good for you. We're all pissed. This sucks for all of us. What are you going to do? Go off by yourself? Okay. See you in another 500 metres because there's nowhere else you can fucking go. (sighs) I got really mad at Harry. I'm sorry. Well, well, Harry backed down. Shackleton wrote in his diary that night, Everyone working well except the carpenter. I shall never forget him in this time of strain and stress. And he won't. Mm -hmm. Let me just say that. Oh, bit of sizzle. Going to kill him. Mm-hmm. Eat him. Two days later, with only seven and a half miles, 12K progress achieved in seven backbreaking days, Shackleton called a halt, observing, quote, it would take us over 300 days to reach land at this pace. Oof. The crew put up their tents and settled into what Shackleton called Patience Camp, which would be their home for more than three more months. Oh, no. Oh. They were running low on supplies, so the dogs were shot. No. Some of them eaten. No. It's a great thing about dogs. But you can eat them. Excuse me? Well, I mean, they both um, can pull your food, but when they're not pulling any more food, they can be food. Says the vegetarian. I'm surprised they made it. Like, I was thinking though, this story was going to be over the next, you know, they were going to die in a month after the ship got fucked. Yeah, they've lasted a while. Yeah, Doing well so far? Yeah, seemingly. Except Harry. Oh, they also had a lot of seal meat. I imagine really fatty. (laughs) Oh, I think that, it was right in I that think kind was, of weather. Yeah, right. but I think it was pretty awful. So they had seal and penguins. They had penguins too. Oh, but somehow they're so that cute. seems worse. <laughs> yeah, but I think it was quite quite fatty all around. But yeah, but they ate every part of the animal. Sometimes they talk about having seal backbone. What? Eating the bone. Well, That's... I think that I think it had flesh on it. Ugh. Okay. And but they, they took they that off and ate the bone. That's weird. <laughs> 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 they threw the meat into the water. <laughs> Uh, the group were suddenly forced to bail on Patience Camp, this is three months later, on the evening of the 8th of April, when the sheet of ice suddenly split. Oh, my God. The camp now found itself in a small triangular triangular raft of ice with water all around them. If this broke into even smaller pieces, they would definitely be dead. So Shackleton readied the lifeboats for the party's sudden departure. Wow. Shack debated about which island to head for. He considered Deception Island, hearing that there was no. a little... That sounds like a bad sounds idea. bad, doesn't it? Yeah. He heard that the, that whilst people didn't live there, there was a church for whalers there. That but that built. was a lie. <laughs> it's all a fucking lie. It's just a, mira- it's just a mirage. It's a mirage. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> he hoped that he would catch some whalers at church, or the other option was the closer Elephant Island, which is also uninhabited, and they wouldn't be rescued from there. But like, don't. Disrupt the whalers at church. Yeah, I mean, a bit of respect. Bit of fucking respect. I mean, wait outside. Bit of, on the Sabbath. Come Till on. they're done. Oh, and it is on the Sabbath. They plan to land on the Sabbath. And they're planning to land on oh, the that's Sabbath. That's rude. Heathens. Get in the day before. Yeah. And and bloody wait. Wait your turn. Yeah. So they like... learn nothing at patience camp. Jeez, Lord. <laughs> They've got none. <laughs> Tell you that. Hey, Dave, you've stopped calling Ernie Ernie. Can you go back to that, please? Yeah, you've been calling him Shackleton, which is so disrespectful. Ugh, yucky. So Shaq Oton. Oh, boy. This is the worst day of my life. <laughs> Shaquille Oton. No, it was Shaquille Oton. <laughs> yeah, you've already forgotten your own nickname. Because Shaq Oton's better. Like, you know how they, Call over time, <laughs> over time you, like, progress through names? Like, it's Little Bow Wow, then Bow Wow, or Well, that's just because he's no longer Big Little. Big Bow Wow. Pardon? That's just because he's not Little anymore. Well, he's, he's no he's longer a Shaquille. He's now a Shaq. Okay. What? I oh, know that does make sense. Sorry, oh, wow. I, I yeah, wasn't following actually, now. Yeah, yeah. now okay. I get it. Well, do go on. Do shut um, on. So they decide to go for Elephant Island, which even though no one's there, they thought they'll get there and then they might start hopping to other islands. So an a elephant closer. meat is, um, you know, they're bigger. Yeah, you, more meat on them. Yeah, yeah. A oh, beautiful, a beautiful animal to eat. <laughs> That's a beautiful eating animal. Yeah. Oh, is, oh, is it a beautiful animal to eat? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Quite to look hideous to look to at. behold <laughs> nothing. Uh, so they're suddenly they're now in the lifeboats. They're at sea. Conditions were horrendous. Temperatures were sometimes low as minus twenty Fahrenheit or minus thirty Celsius. Little food. The regularly soaked in icy seawater. Wow. This was wearing the men down physically and mentally. The men reportedly had to have their hands chipped off the oars after a shift as they were frozen solid to the oar. Well, they're in a boat now. Yeah, so they're in the boat. Like have they been in a boat for a while? A little while. Sorry. Come on, Maddie. You were thinking about Deception I, I think, Island. I'm pretty sure I did start the sentence with, they're in a boat now. Yes. <laughs> oh, that sucks. I'm just not built for these things. Like, I, no, I'd be the one who's like, I'm done. <laughs> I, just, I, like, I would lie I'd down just and lie just die. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like McNish. Or, I'd just but lie I wouldn't, down in the snow. But I wouldn't be, say I'm not keep I, going. I would have done say, it ages ago. I would have been like, you keep going. I don't, no, don't get oh, angry at me. Yeah. I'm just going to die here. Yeah, I'm done. I'm fine. It's okay. I it's don't cool. want to keep I'm walking. not going to keep eating a fucking seal backbone. No. I'm There's not. flesh. We could eat the flesh. I'm not doing it. I would have sat on the boat. Like, going out into the ice... That's where it gets fucked. You're in a boat at least. Just wait till it goes down. There's a bed in there. You got DVDs and stuff. I'm just yeah. hanging out in there. I probably would have just stayed in Buenos Aires. Here it's cool. Even better. Yeah. I probably would never have gone. How about that bloke that, that <laughs> strode away? Yeah, what a fuck. He's 18 head. and he's like, I didn't have to come here. I'm I was probably not getting told paid. Me not to. No one knows where I am. Oh, I don't bloody They're probably going to eat me. That was a joke from about a year ago, but it's probably it's pretty serious now. Oh dear, but they like him. They did actually more yeah. than Harry. Yeah, Harry's. Oh, Harry's McNish is not happy. Not not popular. On the journey to make things worse, many of the men had dysentery. Oh no! Which in a boat, I just can't imagine Matt, how bad that like would be. Dysentery. People shitting and vomiting uh, in a boat whilst uh, you're frozen. It would just so be. Good. I can't imagine anything worse. Yeah, no, it'd be just awful. Like, and you couldn't look someone in the eye if you'd just watched them shit themselves in a boat. Oh, <laughs> oh they're in the boat? In oh, the no. Boat. It's horrendous. <laughs> oh, my God. And it's contagious. Oh, yeah. Dysentery is quite e- contagious. Extremely. Yeah, really contagious. Oh, so everyone's going to have it. Definitely. You're just still sitting in each other's even if, shit. Even if oh, I'm starting no. to get the gurgles of dysentery, you've already got it, mate. Oh, man. Oh, do you get gurgles? <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> Someone wrote that the rations got pretty low and they you got one biscuit a day. And he wrote, quote, you look at it for breakfast, you suck it for lunch, and then you eat it for dinner. That's a great yeah. line. And then you shit all night long. <laughs> <laughs> you shit it for dessert. <laughs> you shit it for dessert. <laughs> and repeat. Oh, no, I couldn't live on a biscuit a day. And the, are they, I'm hungry right now. Have they got fresh packets again? Are we back in a Monte Carlo? Yeah, thank, it's a good biscuit, don't worry. Okay, great. It's a big biscuit. It's one of those giant cookies. Oh, where, where are these guys from? Because American biscuits are weird, like hard, woody no, they're, bread, they're, aren't they? So mostly British and Irish. So real biscuits, cookies, cookies. biscuits. Yep, bickies. Bickies, what a bicky! But Ooh. they don't have any tea. No. Oh, they actually do have tea. So they've taken that little kerosene oh. burner. So they are having hot drinks. That's actually one of the oh. rare luxuries they have. But then they're shitting themselves. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> then they're shitting that hot tea. <laughs> Onto each other. Well, it's still hot. <laughs> well, it's, it's going right hot. through them. It's coming in hot and going out even hotter. <laughs> even hotter. <laughs> even hotter. This entry sounds awful. <laughs> My bo- turns your body into a like, no, a, a, ke- like a burner. You'd One of those. lose a lot of weight, I reckon. Turns your body into an urn. Oh, they'd be ripped. <laughs> oh. They get back. The one, when they get back at the end of this happy ending that's coming up soon, <laughs> yeah. they're going to get home and their friends and family are going, oh, you look good. The calendar. Antarctica was good for you. Oh, yeah. man. They call it the Shackleton diet. Yeah. You, have, you get one biscuit, you get dysentery, and then you swim in cold water every day. Yep. Do that for a week, babe. It's a great detox. So good. <laughs> I love it. I'm doing the Shackleton this week. Oh, my God. I did the Scott last week. I froze to death in my tent. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to try lemon detox after that. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, the three of us were tied together, and they're at sea for six days and six nights. No. A whale swam past one day, and they huh. had, to, had to pray that, that it didn't. Would have been sick. That it, well, they had to pray that it didn't decide to breach or jump out of the water near them, because if it landed on one of the boats, because they were all tied together, it would mean that they'd all go under. Why are they praying? Just let it happen. To shoot the whale. <laughs> Eat what? the whale. If so, they, are they religious? Everyone was back then, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Eventually, they made it to Elephant Island. They had invented atheism. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, the idea of not God didn't exist yet. But yours. they had invented Granny Smiths, for fuck's sake. They hadn't cross-pollinated atheism yet. <laughs> Please use the correct terms. Sorry. Eventually they made it to Elephant Island, which is an 
amazing feat in itself. So six days and six nights at sea. It had been one year and four months since they had touched proper land. Mm. So they've been away for that long so far. Mm. On arrival... Shackleton thought to give Blackborough, who's the 18-year-old young stowaway, youngest of the crew, the honour of being the first to step on the island. Forgetting that his feet had been badly frostbitten, he helped over the wall of the boat, he fell in the shallows and was quickly carried ashore. Oh, it's like, you get to go, oh, I forgot you can't walk. <laughs> His face plants into the cold water. Uh, uh, nobody on. thought of that like, he shall go for it, sir. No, he <laughs> shall they, go. They threw him in. Yeah. <laughs> Just watch him sink. Right. Oh, right. that's right. That backfired. Why did none of you say anything? <laughs> he doesn't have any feet, sir. <laughs> thought you'd be able to tell. <laughs> the men were absolutely rooted. Tired, cold, shivering, frostbitten, emaciated, shitting everywhere. <sighs> Some were acting crazy. and Sh- pe- Shaddington. <laughs> Shaddington. <laughs> Shaddington Bear. Says Mr. I don't like poop jokes. I don't like poop And you don't jokes. like puns. I, not, I don't like either of those. But things. look at what you've become. <laughs> the show's ruined me. Some of the men appeared mentally unwell. Yeah, not surprising When one man got to... Someone wrote in their diary that one of the men got to land and immediately, with an axe, killed ten seals for no reason. Oh, shit. Just shit. lost it. How do you do that? Just started, oh. just started chopping them. <laughs> Holy shit. So, like... It shouldn't be funny. But it's a little bit funny. No, it's crap. <laughs> <laughs> How did you? <laughs> it shouldn't be funny, but it's a little bit funny. Huge laugh. <laughs> what the fuck? I know. I mean, it would be funny to see it and then be, have to be like sleep next to that guy that night, but like, <laughs> just, <laughs> just the whole time just shitting. Where's he getting that energy from? <laughs> I'm gonna kill the seals. <laughs> Not with shit. That's because uh, <laughs> oh, Matt, come on, do a fart sound. It's real fun. Well, it's because he um he wanted to kill all the seals because his ass seal uh, hadn't been working. <laughs> his ass <arse> seal. <laughs> Shrinked Maybe if I sacrifice a seal to the ass seal god, <laughs> he'll stop me pooing myself. <laughs> My dacks are well and truly soiled. <laughs> and it's not like they've got clean underwear. No, they don't oh have anything with them. I mean, they're in the same clothes, uh, aren't they? Yeah. Why, you wash it out why with. They? You wash it out with like freezing water, and then put it back on. Ugh. No, thank you. Seriously, I would have just. I reckon. Yeah, I wouldn't have got on the boat, and then if I somehow ended up on the boat, it would have been very early in this trip. I would have been like, well, I'm done. <laughs> well, thankfully, you both of you said no to the yeah. newspaper ad, so thank you're goodness. fine. Thank goodness. You're still tucked in your. Actually, no. Matt's probably enlisted to the First World War and has probably <laughs> died. But I'm probably waiting for my husband to not return. Yeah, that's so right. So that. it's win win. Woo! Win win. Win win win. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. But uh, I, I was. At first, thinking that it was going to be a thing I'm going to regret. I thought that was why you were asking it, because it was yeah. going to be like, yeah, you fell for it. Yeah, that's right. You just said no to co-founding Microsoft with Bill Gates. <laughs> you fuckhead. <laughs> yeah. That was going to be something like that. Wanted. <laughs> Many hours of darkness, as Bill Gates has had. You put in, like, the, the fucking Yale listings. That's so good. Uh, they managed to erect their tents and all fell immediately asleep. Oh, that's good. <laughs> good, good, good. Good night's sleep. Well, where they were, however, offered shutter. no shelter. I mean, they shat themselves in the tent. <laughs> yeah, they pooed all night, but they were sound asleep. <laughs> Imagine being so tired that you're pooing and you don't even know. Is it still night all the time? So has <laughs> no, all this no, been day- happening in the dark? No, no it's, it's daytime now. It's been so long that they're about to go into another winter. Oh. Uh, where they were ha- offered no shelter and they again had to move two days later. They took the boats back out and landed at a different place uh, on Elephant Island, which they named Cape Wild, named after second in charge Frank Wild. <laughs> Many of them called it Cape Bloody Wild. Ooh. <laughs> Why don't they call it Cape Frank and then everyone could share everyone it? Everyone gets a go. <laughs> you know? if you want to talk about morale, Hang fuck on. the banjo off. Just give, if, give the Frank If some Wild wealth. gets a... Uh, it gets a cape. Do, do I get the next cape? Yeah, I want a cape. I <laughs> want to be a fucking cape. Yeah, I want a cape. Yeah. Do you reckon that's why Mignish, Mignish stopped? Because yeah. he wasn't getting the bowel cape he deserved. He just wanted to be called Frank. Call me Frank. No, you, your name's uh, Harry. It's already confusing enough. Call me Frank or I won't take another fucking step. <laughs> <laughs> and then he killed ten seals. <laughs> Is he the one who killed the no, seals? No, he wasn't. Oh. I'm not sure who it was. <laughs> Funny, but it's funny. It's crazy. Don't you think a seal killing spree? It's like a little ten, bit funny. Ten with an axe. It's, an axe. it's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> it's so and the rest of them just sitting there going, 
well, this is awkward. Do I say something or he might kill me? Exactly. Ooh. That's the seals? <laughs> yeah, the seals. <laughs> this is awkward. <laughs> Lay dead. Play dead. I'll never know. Uh, so they landed at Cape Bloody Wild, but the weather turned and they landed in sleet and rain. By nightfall, a gale blew up, ripping one of the tents to shreds and blowing a lot of their equipment out to sea. Oh, no. The men crawled under the boats for shelter as snow was heaped upon them. The blizzard raged for five straight days. They were just stuck under... Under the boats. It's crazy! This is fucked. How do we know this, though? The great thing is... (gasps) Diaries. The Elephant Island had fresh water and seals to murder and penguins for meat. But it had no other... He made that sound like, I mean, they'll eat the penguins, but the murdering is just for fun. It's just for fun. <laughs> How many seals can you kill with an axe in five minutes? So you're, are you thinking, are you thinking that maybe the, the survivors and they've told the tale? Or they found the diaries? Well, I'm, yeah, I'm, f- I'm, I'm always assumed they make it. Yeah, at first I got a bit excited thinking survivors, because it's like the Zodiac Killer one where you figured out early on that like if we knew what had happened, that means somebody remembered it or could yeah. recall it. But yeah, you're right, diaries. I but wonder. then if they found the diaries, that means they at least found them. Yes. May They may have been skeletons. <laughs> but Clutching a diary. <laughs> but, you know, or maybe at least one person and he just had a bag full of everybody's diaries. He collected everyone's diaries and then they all died. Maybe the kid makes it. Yeah. Not the puppies, though. Fuck, not They're the long gone. Puppies. They're certainly not going to make it. <laughs> just let them go. Fuck. I can't. Sake. It's weird numbers and I don't like it. There was no other vegetation on the island, so they're just pretty much stuck to the tiny bit of food they've got left, plus eating seals and penguins. Imagine being a vegetarian, or like gluten intolerant. <laughs> I don't think that existed then. They hadn't invented that. No. Interesting. Well, Matt, they said they had dysentery. I think they were all just celiacs. <laughs> shitting themselves all fucking night. Well, all they're eating is a bicky. A bicky. Gluten in that. Eat this bread biscuit. It will sort you out. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, no, it's dysentery. You must have dysentery. <laughs> And they're cooking the meat because they've got the burners. Yeah, they've got the burners, yeah. And kerosene. With another winter, or paraffin as they call it, with another winter approaching, which is going to be real cold and really dark again, they did not want to stick around a moment more than necessary. Shackleton knew that they had, sorry, Ernie knew that they had no it's hopes the of... the first time you've said it. Thank you. Ernie knew they had no hopes of rescue on Elephant Island because no one ever went by there. So they would have to make a break for another inhabited island. Some islands were close but they couldn't be reached as the small boats would have to sail west against the powerful sea and wind, which they couldn't do. So they had to go for a much further away island. It was decided that a small group would leave the party and make a break for Georgia Island, where they'd set off 16 months earlier. Oh, yeah. Georgia Island was 800 miles or 1,300 kilometres away. Oh, shit. They would be sailing in some of the roughest oceans on planet on planet Earth, all in a tiny, tiny boat. No. So 1,300 kilometres. No. That's far. 1,300 kilometres. That's, that's the, past that's the length of the Melbourne Cup. <laughs> Several thousand times over. Actually, not that many. Anyway, the South Georgia Party could expect to meet hurricane-force winds and waves, known as the notorious Cape Horn Rollers, measuring from trough to crest, so from the bottom to the top, as high as 18 metres. Nope. Or 60 feet. Nope, I'm not volunteering for that. That is, that's a high... That's so high. ...wave. Are you a surfer? Yeah, yeah, I hang 10 um, <laughs> from time to time. Oh, to gnarly, about you. gnarly. Yeah, rigid edge. <laughs> No, they don't say rigid is. Oh, okay. But Matt does, he mate. loves it. Ca- Carol Banga. Banger. <laughs> 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 yeah, I got, oh, Carol Banga. I got the uh, imitation Ninja Turtle show as yeah. a kid. <laughs> Carol Banga. Carol Banga. Uh, because the, they were going to face such harsh conditions, Shackleton Sel- Ernie selected the heaviest and strongest of the three boats, a 22 and a half footer or 6.9 metre long ship called the James Cad, named after... James Cadd. James Cadd, the guy that had given them like two million pounds. Yeah, that's that's right. yep. You've got to remember, some of the waves are going to be 18 metres and the ship itself is only seven metres long. Fuck. So, it's pretty crazy. Shackleton asked the expedition... That's more than double. It's nearly triple if you round down six point nine to six. So, uh, nah. Hey, believe. <laughs> okay. Ernie asked the expedition's carpenter, former bad boy and rebel Harry McNish, Mm-mm. if he could make the vessel more seaworthy. Using improvised tools and materials, McNish raised the boat's sides and built a makeshift 
deck of wood. So before this has just been an open boat, one of those ones like that you see, one of the like the Titanic lifeboats. You a, know, like a like a, ro- a rowboat style yeah. thing, but it doesn't have a roof. So he built one so they could at least get out of the. How handy the is it having the carpenter all of a sudden? So good. Uh, he sealed it with oil paints. He made it into a submarine and seal blood. Oh, oh that's great. Which is great because someone killed ten of them. <laughs> we, we've been hanging on to these carcasses and not knowing what to do. <laughs> I just hate waste. Eat the backbone, <laughs> throw the rest away. One ton of rock was also added to the bottom of the ship to act as a ballast to stop it from capsizing in the... In the that's a lot of rock. It's a lot of rock. But then it makes it really heavy. Really heavy. So that means that when the waves toss yeah, it around, hopefully it will stay Does it not cent- also mean like centered. it's heavier for them to row it? Uh... Well, when, when things float, they it's easier. No. no. When things float, it's easier. You're talking about with boats. Yeah, it's easier to you know. It's easier to when when boats float, it's easier. Is that what you're saying? Yep. Hmm. Disagree. <laughs> well, a thousand kilos. No, I know what you mean, but it, you, it would still be a bit heavier, wouldn't it? It's sort of like rowing a boat with just you in it, and then rowing a boat with twenty people in it. Look, I'm hearing You'd what you're saying. You'd notice the difference, right? I'm hearing what you're saying. And we're going to have to agree that I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and thought about it. It's fucked. They're fucked. I'm going to write them off right now. I've read, the, I've read the story and I know if they make it or not. And they're fucked. They're fucked. Because of this. What's the way? I missed something. So they've picked six of them. Yeah. I'm gonna and the other ones they've pick. put in the bin. No, they've left them on Elephant Island and they've formed a camp. And they're going to come back for them, supposedly. Yeah, so it's like, we're going to make a break for it. And if we get help, we'll come back. So they're splitting the party. Yeah, just like Birkin Wills should not have <laughs> several times. Uh, they took ration packs that had been intended for the uh, crossing because they still had stuff left from when they were going to go from one side of Antarctica to the other. They got biscuits, bovril, the drink. Bovril, that's beef juice. Sugar and dried milk. They took 18 gallons of water, two stoves, paraffin, which is kerosene, oil, candles, sleeping bags and some spare clothing. Shackleton chose, of the, of the six men, it's Shackleton plus Worsley, the experienced navigator, and the guy that had given him the biscuit. That makes sense. Irishman Tom Crean, a badass who had been to Antarctica before. The last time he went to Antarctica, he was with a group who couldn't continue, so he walked 56 kilometres in 18 hours without survival equipment to get help for the others in Antarctica. So he's like... The kind of guy you want to have in your survival party. Mm -hmm. He actually begged Shackleton to let him come on this extra dangerous bit. So he's like, you know, one of the the Montes. Yeah. Yeah. D.B. Cooper, super cool. Super cool adventure lover. Yeah, just loves to do shit. Can't relate to that at all. Uh, (laughs) Neither can I. I'm (laughs) like, no. No, thank you. I'm the guy that's like, yeah, you march ahead. You do 56k in 18 hours. Good luck. Cool, bye. I'll stay here with my Pokemon cards. Yeah. Uh, Shackleton asked for volunteers. Strong sailors, John Vincent and Timothy McCarthy stepped up. So now there's four of them. The last place, place Shack or Ernie offered to Carpenter McNish. Oh. So Vincent, one of the sailors, and McNish had each proved difficult during the boat journey from the ice to the Elephant Island. They were both somewhat awkward characters, and the selection may have reflected. Ernie's wish to keep potential troublemakers under his personal charge rather than with the others where ah. they could start trouble. Or maybe he thought McNish was a good guy to have. Nah. Troublemaker. Uh, before leaving, Shackleton sh- instructed Frank Wilde, the name Kate Wilde after, that he was to be fully in charge as soon as he left and that should the journey fail, he was to make the take the party to Deception Island the following spring in their own boat. So if we don't come back in a certain time, in a couple of months, you you go. Assume we're dead. That's his thing. Shackleton immediately established an onboard routine. Two three-man watches that swapped every four hours around the clock, with one man at the helm, another at the sails, and the third on bailing duty, because they're constantly getting water in the boat, so they're just tipping it out over and over again. The off-watch trio rested in the tiny covered space... Below. Their clothing, which was designed for Antarctic sledging rather than open boat sailing, was far from waterproof, and with uh, repeated contact with the icy seawater, their skin was painfully raw. Oh, no. 
Uh, the movement of the ship made preparing hot food on the boat nearly impossible, but Cream, the badass Irishman who acted as cook, somehow kept the men fed. So he's also a cook. So now he is Casey Ryback, a.k.a. Steven Seagal in Under Siege 1 and 2. Oh, yes. I was thinking the same thing. The chef, and he's also like had knife skills and he was a Navy SEAL or something and also like a, just an expert. Yeah, just so good at like... At being like tough. And then a, a lady jumped out of the cake, but she'd been drugged. And she jumped out like the day later and was like, where's the party? And the party was already over. Stupid bitch. And, then, <laughs> and the siege was on. The siege, so he the brought siege, her on. The siege was the team. And the then siege they sort of... Is on, uh, and Tommy Lee Jones was the siege. Yeah. Hmm. Well, now I don't need to watch that movie. Thanks, guys. No, you don't. Spoilers. Well, you mean, thanks, guys. And if you want to... Watch number two. You don't have to do that either because it's the same thing but on a train. Got it. But fuck, it's good. As they're going on, continuously bailing water out, they only made four land sightings and Worsley, the navigator, had to calculate everything else from either the sun, which was often behind cloud, and then when that wasn't there, he had to calculate where they were via dead reckoning, which is where you just try and work out how far you've travelled based on how fast you think you're going. Like We were here there uh, ten hours ago. We've probably travelled about 6k an hour. We're probably about there. Mm. Which is pretty inexact. Every degree mistake they miscalculated, they'd be 60 miles out of their final journey. And they only had 10 miles leeway to begin with. So you pretty much can't fuck it at all. Otherwise, you're going to miss the island and either keep going forever or go in the wrong oh direction. Oh, my God. Jeez. After, after 10 days at sea in this constant 24-7 uh, swapping shifts... Worsley calculated they were only halfway there. Two of the men were close to death. Shackleton often checked the men's pulses, and every time he thought they were too cold or too close to death, he would order a hot drink for everyone, and he would never let the weakest man know that it was on his account that they ordered the drink. So he never singled anyone out to their Aww. face. He's really good at keeping morale up, and he's like com- optimistic this whole time. So the big optimist. Wow. Vincent collapsed and had his lip torn away when it got frozen ah. to a metal cup. Oh, you never... Yeah, that's like that Dumb and Dumber thing. Don't don't lick the metal pole in the it's, cold. Especially in Antarctica. Yeah. That's pretty cold. Yeah. Then one day, the men saw seaweed. And the next morning, there were birds, including a type which were never far from land, so they knew they were close to something. As they approached the high cliffs of the coastline, heavy seas made immediate landing impossible. So for more than 24 hours... <laughs> They floated off the coast as they waited the wind to shift and uh, they got caught in one of the worst hurricanes any of them oh, had for ever experienced. Sake. And for all this time, they were in danger of being driven into the rocky South Georgia shore. And when the storm had eased slightly, Shackleton was concerned that the weak members of his crew would not last even one more day and decided whatever the hazard, they must risk it and attempt a landing. After several attempts, they made it onto the, the shore of South Georgia Island They'd been at sea for 17 straight days. Nope. No, thank you. They didn't appreciate it at the time, but that was one of the greatest boat journeys ever accomplished. That's amazing. So, against all odds, they'd made it to Georgia Island, but they realised quickly that they were on the wrong side. The whaling station was on the other side of the island. Oh, fuck. As the party recuperated, Shackleton realised that the boat was not capable of making another voyage to go around the island. So he decided that uh, Vincent and McNish, who were the least healthy of the men, were unfit to travel further. So he left left them. To die. Not to die, just to so, sort of set up camp. He left them to die. <laughs> he decided that he, Worsley and Crean, the badass, would cross the island on foot, aiming for the station on the other side. The only map they had showed the coastline of the island, but not the island's interior, which at that time was uncharted. The whalers considered the interior of the island impenetrable and no one had ever hiked across it because it was extremely rough terrain pitted with mountains and glaciers. So they had no idea what to expect, but they tried. McNish, the builder, improvised climbing boots with screws that he put into the soles so the men could have more grip. That's so clever. They would walk at night when the snow was colder and harder and easier to cross. However, they couldn't stop or they, they would succumb to the cold, so they had to make it in one go. Oof. They were too weak to take supplies, so they just took some rope. That was about it. And a bit of food. They set out at 3am under a full moon and calm weather. 
Beneath the snow was ice fields pitted with crevasses. One wrong step and it was goodbye forever. Oh, shit. No, I'm done so long so ago. Long. You were so long ago, <laughs> Jeff. Hey, I'm, wh- like, back in England by now, going, that was fucked. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> As Imagine. in I turned around, like, I, I left the house, <laughs> I walked down the street a bit, and then I went, Hang on. Actually, nah. And That's, then I turned around. This isn't for me. I said, sorry about that. Uh, what were you saying? Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Just continue the conversation I was having. Sorry, sorry. For some reason, I thought I'd enlist, but <laughs> that's not me at all. That's not me at all. Anyway, chin chin. Chin chin uh, they walked all morning and all day, but found themselves trapped at high altitude on top of a precipice at nightfall, and with temperature dropping, having no sleeping bags, Shackleton said to the others, we've got to take a risk. Are you guys game? Oh, my God. And of fucking course they were game. This is Crean, the badass. Worsley, the navigator of the stars. <laughs> they decided to slide down. He, he does one of those, those buses around LA. Yeah. Yo, yeah, yeah. man. And they never miss. See Danny DeVito's house. Imagine. Danny DeVito may or may not live there. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. A small man lives there. Uh, so they decided to slide down the mountain in near darkness. Slide down. That so, just sounds bloody fun. That does sound like a good time. So they, uh, they tied, them- Back in. tied themselves to each other with rope, then pushed off with no idea what rocks, cliffs, razor-sharp ice, or crevasses lay below Terrible them. idea. They finished... At the bottom of a bank of snow, when they got up, they realised they'd all made it, and they shook hands. Oh, my God. These That's are so English. Gentlemen. Well done, boys. Congratulations on survival. Very good. For the Queen, boys. <laughs> After 26 hours of continuous hiking, they decided to have their first rest. Ernie realised they couldn't all sleep all at the same time, because sleeping at that temperature was very risky anyway. And Didn't they you say they were going to go in one hit? They wanted to, but they decided we'll have a small, small nap here. Ugh. He let the other two men sleep for five minutes before waking them up and telling them that they'd slept for half an hour. Oh, smart. Energised, they set off again. Oh, but, that is smart. But Fuck Ernie smart. himself has not slept a wink. Oh. After a difficult descent, which involved a passage down through a freezing waterfall, they at last reached safety. At 3pm, they stumbled into the whaling station. They did a... They've been walking for 36 hours. Like, right now, I'm a bit hungry and tired, and I'm just about done. <laughs> like... Thinking about these men, honestly, from now on, I'm just, I think I can do a couple more things that I... <laughs> Were I you should... about to say anything? You're like, nah. No, not, not any... I'm, well, I'm not going to do this, but like I'll be like, oh, I can't be fucked. Taking the bin out. It's cold. I'll be like, Shacklin and do that bin. And then he'd invent a new type of bin. He'd get the dump truck himself. He'd inspire everyone, mm-hmm. and then... We'd all be happy. Just take the bin out. Take the bin out. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do it. You're right. Uh, they stumbled into the whaling station. The men knocked on the whaling manager's door. The manager asked, who the hell are you? My name is Shackleton, he said. The men had met before, but the manager did not recognise their dirty, emaciated and frostbitten faces. Also, they'd have the beards, wouldn't they? Yeah. They'd be all beardy. Super. Well, you'd want that to keep warm. Good call. That that's, night, why, that's why the women can't go. Exactly. Ah. That's why I can't go, because I can't grow a fucking beard. <laughs> Matt, you are so good for this. I'm in. You're in. Uh, that night, the weather turned. Ernie lay in bed and listened to the uh, snow piling up against his window. Had they been caught in that blizzard, they would have certainly died. Oh, my God. He's they in had, a bed. They had only just made it. He's in a bed. That would feel real good. That would be the best feel. feeling ever. Uh, but his men are still out there, and he's, you know... In charge, so oh. he's thinking about them. Ernie, Crean, and um, Warslet set uh, slit, rested for three days before setting out for Elephant Island in a borrowed ship. So they went back to their friends. Three guys on the other side of the island, McNish and Vincent, whatever, whatever, they were picked up and given passengers home. So they they went home oh. as corpses. No, they lived dead. <laughs> they lived dead. They lived dead. From now on, I shall live dead. <laughs> as a slug. <laughs> I am a slug. <laughs> Ernie and the boys were just 60 miles short of Elephant Island in their borrowed ship uh, when they were brought to a stop by the ice. Not again. They had to go back to Georgia Island. Over the next four months, that's right, four months, Ernie tried again and again to get to Elephant Island, but each time they couldn't get through. Oh, no. Imagine that. A big boat can't do what they fluked on a tiny, tiny boat. Oh, bo- shit. And he can't get back to the can't others. Can't get to them. So, and he knows that they're there and he's thinking, are they still alive? What's going and on? And ha- how long did he say before they should have a crack at it? He said a couple of months. So they probably 
will have maybe already gone for. Well, finally, the Chilean government what? lent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The government of Chile. Oh. I think she knew that. She was just wondering <laughs> how they came how into they play. Oh, they lent Ernie a tugboat. Yeah, again, that's... <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, were, they've got a, they're, they're known for tugboats. Yeah, and they've, got, they've got a little tugboat <laughs> slash government office um, down there Didn't on Elfin Island. they have a tugboat Island. on their flag? No, Chile is very close to Georgia Island. It's one of the closest countries, so that it does make sense. All right. Dad. All right, geography. Uh, they made it to Elephant Island on their fourth attempt. Oh. They were now 10 weeks overdue. Not knowing to, what to expect. Aww. What they found. 22 men had survived a sunless winter by living in a hut made of two overturned boats that they lashed together. To get water, they would get chips of the ice and put it in a tobacco tin and lie with it overnight, hoping that enough would melt Aww. that in the morning they'd have a teaspoon for breakfast. Oh, my, oh my God. God. One man had a cooking book and at night he would read one recipe and the men would listen and then make suggestions as to how they would improve that meal. The oh. meal they couldn't actually taste. That oh, is... that sounds like punishing. Yeah, it's kind of torture, but also very cute. <laughs> one oh, night... I think just a little bit of mint would really bring out the, uh, the flavours. Fuck off, it's perfect. It's Jamie's. <laughs> Jamie never gets it wrong. <laughs> at one night, one of them wrote in his diary that he would dream of all the second helpings he'd refused at home. Oh. Every morning, Wild, who's in charge, would, would say, Lash up and stall. The boss may come today, boys. But by late August, even he had given up hope. <gasps> oh. They were preparing to send their own boat, because that's what Shackleton told them to do. Until one day, they left the tent and someone yelled, Boat! <laughs> On the boat... <laughs> I wonder what they meant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> On the boat, surveying the, the beach was uh, Shackleton, who scanned the island with binoculars and counted the men as they came out of the hut. They're all there, Skipper! They're all safe! Oh my god. It had been one of the most incredible journeys in history and not a single man had died. No way! All of them made it back. What the fuck? Isn't that amazing? That was not the ending I was expecting! Jess, could you please remember Mrs. Chips, three puppies and six slugs. Six slugs. Four puppies. Rest in peace. Four puppies, sorry about that. If it was three puppies, it'd be it fine because they'd have 70 yeah. dogs. Okay, and you wouldn't also, be anywhere near the dogs? as upset. Oh, they ate most of them. There are oh. no dogs left, right? There's all the dogs were eaten. Oh, that's gross. Oh, dear. Uh, sh- just as a postscript, Shackleton himself finally arrived back in England the 29th of May, 1917, having no idea that World War I was still going on. Remember, they left like two weeks in and like three years later, it's still going. Wow. Uh, because of the war, his story was barely noticed at the time. <gasps> That's bullshit. He did a few speaking engagements, but then mainly was lost. It's only over the last sort of 50 years that his story has come back into popular Uh, folklore. Outside of his lifetime? Yeah, definitely. When did he die? Well, I'll get to that. Many of the men enlisted when they returned home, so they went straight to the front line. I bet the Irish man did. Oh, he definitely did. Uh, Two of the men died in the war, including uh, Timothy. Timothy McCarthy was one of the guys that made that final boat journey. Wow. So he survived all of that. It was killed to die. Why would you enlist? Because they were pretty brave young guys. Yeah, obviously. Wow. On Shackleton himself's recommendation, all but four of the men were awarded polar medals. Oh, Harry missed out. Tell me Harry missed out. Despite his efforts to prepare the boat and sail on that final journey, the builder McNish's rebellion earlier was not forgotten and he was denied the medal. Fuck oh. off, Harry! That feels that feels a bit rough to me. As was John Vincent, also on the final journey. He had his a big lip, sook. His, his oh, lip what? fucking torn off. Didn't get a medal. But was he the other sooky one? I think he was. Well, on that final journey, he was the one that was closest to death and he was not... Pulling his but I thought as much. he but was the he one. He was fucking dying. He was the one that was also offered the position because he was a bit of a troublemaker. Yeah, he was a bit of a yeah, troublemaker. Yeah, that's why. And the carpenter um, built the boat so that built it could survive Matt. that last. Come on, come on, mate. He really pulled his. And a lot of the other guys said that it was a bit harsh because even though he arced up that day, one day he probably fucking saved him. Wow. Uh, that's fucked. Two other guys didn't get the medal. Shackleton never publicly dis- disclosed why these two men missed out on the medal. Mm. He just decided. Who so didn't like him? Just oh, and for, for me looking into them, that didn't seem like they'd done anything wrong, but I'm not sure. Just give them all the fucking medal. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, my God. Shackleton himself organised one final Antarctic expedition in 1921, a few years later, the goals of which were imprecise. Many of the crew of the Endurance signed up again oh, to go wow. back with him. What? 
He's a, he must be an amazing felt, leader. And they would have felt indestructible, probably. Yeah, yeah. that's true. If we live through that. Uh, Shackleton made it back to South Georgia Island, that final island, but there he had a heart attack and died. Oh. His wife requested he be buried on the island. He was only 47 years old. Oh, wow. L- looking at a lot of these guys, they died in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. And I think if it's you live like that life. for three mm. years, it definitely must take its toll, right? Yeah. Wow. Uh, final note. In 2004, a life-size bronze statue of Mrs. Chippy was placed <laughs> on the grave of McNish, who was very fond of the cat, by the New Zealand Antarctic Society in recognition of his efforts on the expedition. I think they felt that he should have gotten some sort of medal. So they gave him a statue of a cat. Well, he was, he was sort of his cat. Yeah, but, like, it's not a medal, is it? It's a fucking statue of a cat. Well, he's, also statue very of... de- he's also very dead. Also... Statue of him. I will probably be the first to go of us. Yeah. So right. please don't put a statue of a cat. Really? On my grave. I'll take Jess's cat. You can have, have it. it. I'll you have can it. have it. It's all yours. Enjoy. Do you have a cat, Jess? No. Nah. Well, yeah, it would, it would that make would very be fucking little weird. Well, I don't have anything, Matt. I forget. We'll, so we'll make a statue of that. Thanks. How about this? You cool with this, Jess? In February 2011, Mrs. Chippy was featured on a postage stamp issued by South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands. No, nah, also don't like that. Fuck the cat. Don't. I mean, don't they fuck to, the I mean, they, had to, <laughs> they killed the cat. They didn't fuck the cat. <laughs> Well, maybe they left that out of the diary. <laughs> that there was a diary entry that had been ripped yeah, out that day. That was you probably crazy. wouldn't, I guess. Anyway, just fuck the cat. <laughs> uh, and on that note, that is the story of Shackleton's endurance. Ah, <laughs> uh, what did that report go for? Nearly as long as they were stuck on. That was on. so long, but it was so interesting. Probably and our they, longest one. They all met, and I will say that I have a my first that I came across this story was in primary school. I was in a choir. It's quite a Me too. for for a primary school choir. It was very good. Actually, won a lot of competitions against adults. It was anyway. Um, Are you thinking about Sister Act Two? Yeah, back were you in, the in habit? Sister Act Two? <laughs> oh, I haven't seen. Oh, Couple of you have both. Day. What are the chances of you both seeing oh, Sister Act Two? Happy. It's a big oh, movie. My God, it's a great movie. Number two. Yeah. It's a, oh, happy it's a, day. It's a and, she, yeah, and, and Whoopi Goldberg's seen, like, no. like, "Come on, you can do it." And then he and then he belts it, and the whole school's like, "What? That yeah. sick. Isn't it? It's like Quentin Tarver, maybe. And Lauren matter. Hill. Lauren Hill's there. Can I tell my choir story? Joyful, joyful, Lord, we adore thee. Anyway, so I was in this primary school choir, and uh, we worked with uh, a like a musical composer, this guy called Stephen Leake, and uh, he used to write these like concept pieces with like full orchestras and full choirs, and he wrote this one with the school, so we were like we would suggest lyrics and stuff for it, and it was called Endurance, and it was about the story of Shackleton. Cool. And it went on to be a number one hit in Australia. And New Zealand. Dave's a millionaire. You got the royal ticket. Yeah, here. number one. I'm a millionaire from the Australian Aria Charts. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> but anyway, so I've just, but I know, but I was only like ten years old at the time, so I didn't appreciate. It. So going back to this story, I was, um, oh man, and I've got to say, Tim Robertson on Facebook. When that came through, I was like, I remember this. That's amazing. So Tim, thank you so much. Thanks, Tim. All right, guys, I know it's been a long episode, but we've got one last thing to do, and that is to say thank you to everyone who supports us uh, via Patreon, patreon.com slash do go on pod, to keep the pod rocking and rolling. And as a thank you to the people that do that. <laughs> no. We have never rocked nor rolled. <clears throat> Watch me roll. Dave, stop oh, it. He's, he's rolling there. Um, um, it, look, it looks like I'm humping in an office chair. <laughs> humping. Humping. Everybody's humping. All right, we want to th- say thanks to everyone who's uh, keeping us humping and rolling. Nope. Hey, can I kick this off? Because I want to sp- thank a very special someone mm-hmm. out there. <gasps> Who? Do you mind? Not if at just, all. If oh, I please. take a moment oh, here please. to thank my main man, mm-hmm. Mr. James Roy, the Roy boy. James oh. Roy sounds like a blues singer from the 60s. Oh, he's so much more than that, Jess. <laughs> to me, he's the wind beneath my wings. Wow. He lifts me up. And um, we, he lifts me up, <laughs> and he uh, he makes me feel good about myself and, and and what I'm doing, what I'm about. And I think that you know I can't say enough about this guy. That's great. He is my beautiful Roy boy. Beautiful Roy boy. Happy birthday, Roy boy. I... That's his birthday as well. I don't know, but it could be. <laughs> it will be at some point. I love point. to roll the dice. <laughs> One hundred three hundred sixty-five chance. That's a pretty good chance. Three sixty-six. If he was born on Feb twenty-nine, <laughs> Roy boy. 
I always feel a lot of pressure because you guys always have such great, you know, ways to thank people, and I'm really bad at it. Like I made a Riddler joke. <laughs> That was really bad. I'm surprised that Robert Riddell, who you made the Riddler joke, hasn't withdrawn his patron. Yeah, but, well, he hasn't yet, but there's always time. Maybe he hasn't heard the terrible joke yet. I think he has. I think he tweeted. Anyway, um, the person that I would like to thank, uh, and you know what, I'm going to come clean and say that, like, that I didn't even think of this Don't joke. Come but... clean. Don't come clean. Just go again. <laughs> Just do it. The person that I would like to thank... Uh, is is a very special member of our expedition on our way to the Antarctic Podcast Awards, the biggest awards in the podcasting community. Fact, fact. And I feel like in in our boat, he would be the one that would be checking our pulse and then be like, "Oh, Matt's no good." But we're all going to have a cup of tea, and Matt's not going to know he's the weakest link. Uh, <laughs> And that's, what a summary. That's just the type of spirit of the one and only Douglas Whiteside. Douglas Whiteside. <laughs> he does sound like he could definitely be a character from this yeah, story. Yeah, you've got your Shackletons, you've got your Scots, you've got your Mawsons, and your Whitesides. Your Whitesides. Yeah. He, would, he would definitely rock that boat. Oh, he'd rock it good. Now, but, you in, know, but in a nice way. Yeah. You know who someone... Respectfully. Is, someone else who rocks it in a nice way. Who's that? Now, in Australia, we've famously got Kylie Minogue. Yeah. We've less famously got... Danny Minogue, uh-huh. and we have their long lost distant cousin by marriage because they have a completely different last name. <laughs> I'd like to thank Chloe Cronogue. <laughs> Chloe Cronogue. See, that's great. I just wish I could be as good as you guys. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but in all seriousness, Chloe Cronogue, thank you so much for supporting the show. Thank you, thank you to James down. Roy and thank you to Douglas Whiteside. If you two would like to have your name read out and a terrible joke made by Matt Jess or I, I I'm, try, I'm trying to think of a single Kyle Minogue song. Help me out. What's I the one about the train? I just so lucky. Get you out of my I, I could be so lucky as to have oh, Cronogue in our life. You, weren't you singing Locomotion before? <laughs> I was trying to. Was That's I? That's Kylie. Come on, the locomotion. <laughs> okay, no, nah, <laughs> lost it. Come on, baby, do the locomotion. There we go. Anyway. All aboard, including Cronogue. Toot toot. Toot toot. Chloe Cronogue, to be precise, not any other member of your family, no, Chloe. No, tell that... them to fuck off unless they give us ten bucks. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> um, if you'd like to support us, uh, you get rewards such as this. This is apparently a reward. <laughs> but we also get bonus episodes and uh, extra stuff like that. We've also got the Melbourne Comedy Festival on sale. As I said, four shows, four Sundays. We have the link. We'll be tweeting that out a lot and a lot. But please get on that if you're going to be in Melbourne. All patron, all patrons also get the weekly newsletter, which is up and running again now. Mm-hmm. It's like a little a newsletter. We like to write a little column each about what we're doing. Yeah. I, do, I do a top five each week. Yep. Jess does a, what's what? it called? Bop's Corner or something. It's just a check-in, usually <laughs> about her health. It's called The Turn with Jess Perkins. The Turn. <laughs> she turns on something. You never know where I'm going to go. And it's Dave exciting. does. What's your new thing? It's called... Tushin' with Dave or something. <laughs> Tushin' with Dave. <laughs> Dr. Tush. Send in your Tush-related questions no, and I'll answer them. Please if don't. you do, I will. <laughs> please let me answer your questions. Your Tush-related questions? Tush-related only. Oh, dear. If you've got any non-Tush-related questions, fuck Anything off. about dysentery, perhaps? Oh, man. I can't stop shitting. <laughs> I can't stop shitting. What's the problem? Well, you've come to the right place. <laughs> Tush with Dave. You've come to the right tush. <laughs> <laughs> my tush will help your tush become an even greater tush. <laughs> wow. So that's my ha- promise to you. There's a lot happening. It's a lot happening. It's been two hours. It's our longest episode ever. I'd like to say thank you for listening to it. If you enjoy the show, please tell your friends, spread the word. You can tweet to us at Do Go On Pod. On Instagram, we're the same at Do Go On Pod. And Facebook, we're the same. We can also be found on email, do go on pod at gmod.com. You can suggest topics. You can review us on iTunes or wherever you like to do that. It helps the show. My topic will be next week, and uh, as patrons will know, um, the vote is on. I think I'll probably be wrapping it up around the time this goes out, so if you haven't got your vote in yet, let me, of the three topics, which you two dickheads don't even know what the options are, yeah. but really good yeah. options this week. Dickheads. I'm curious as to see what they pick. Excellent. And I'll be reporting on that next week. All right, guys, well, uh, we look forward to talking to you then, but until then, I will say a goodbye. Bye. Laters. Bye.